ICT in early childhood. Karibu, Doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. So that is my focus for this particular conference today. And before we get started, I would like to get the following information from, from all of you. I, I want you to get the following information about a wombat. And wombat is spelled as W O M B A T. So W O M B A T, a wombat. Okay? I think we have got the spelling right. Now, I want you to find the following information about that particular term wombat. One, do you tell me what it is in terms of its appearance and whatever? Number two, you, you tell me where it is found on earth. Number three, you, you tell me about the size, and the size here is in terms of length, not height, but length. And, and that particular size has to be in meters. I'm very specific, it has to be in meters. Okay? And you are given two minutes to do that. And I have been informed that there is a very good library downstairs. So if you want to get some more information, you can probably rush down and come up with the information. But the time allocated is two minutes. Am I clear on the way? So the term we're looking for is Wombat and spelled as W O M B A T. Wombat. Want to know what it is? That means how it looks like, where it is found on earth, and then in terms of its size. And the size I'm very specific on the length, and that particular size has to be given in meters. I hope I'm understood. I'm presuming that I'm, I'm understood. So the, the, the two minutes are almost getting close to the end, if I can have the answers. I'll, I'll move that around to actually fetch the, the answers. A short leg, muscular quadruple maspia that are native Australia to Australia. They are about one meter in length with a small stubby tail, weight between 20 and 35 kg. There are three extant species and they are all members of the family Vombatidae. Right, thank you. A another addition to that. But I think that that answer suffices for that particular presentation. Now, I assume that if I were to ask you this particular question in 1905, would you be able to quickly get the answers just in the way she has just done? 1905. So this has been possible because of digital literacy. And digital literacy is just the, the, the way we, how we, we navigate and use technology for various purposes. So my focus then today is to actually advocate some of the strategies that we can use to integrate information and communication technologies in early childhood education in this country. Now the menu for the day, I'll a bit talk about the rationale for integrating ICT in early childhood education, then I'll talk about the research questions in a very brief way, and then briefly I'll talk about the status of ICT integration in early childhood education, and then I'll just talk about the methodology of this particular study, then the role of ICT in early childhood edu education, and then I'll just come up with some of the strategies that we might use to integrate ICT in early childhood education, and that will be followed by a concluding remark. There is ample evidence from research that children from the very young age are 
good users of technology. And the, the fact that they've actually grown up with the technology, that is why they are very competent users of the technology. So in other words, children or people who have grown up with the technology are the digital natives. They are just born seeing the technology uh, being used. Whereas the rest of us who have actually met technology on the way, on our adulthood, we are digital immigrants. We are just being foreigners in the world of technology. So, so if we have enough evidence from research that children can actually use technology at that very young age, then we don't have a reason why we should not integrate ICT in early childhood education. So actually, we already have the potential. Students, are, uh, the, the learners are able to use it. Why should we not use it? So there is that particular need to use it. And then I looked at the various policy documents in this country. I looked at the education and training policy of, 2000, of 2014. Then I looked at the national ICT policy of 2016. And then I looked at the pre-primary curriculum of 2016. They all talk about integrating ICT in the teaching learning process. The, the training policy and the ICT policy actually emphasize that ICT should be used in all levels of education. That means even early childhood education is included, okay? So, so because of that, because we have the documents that can enforce that, then we don't have a reason why we should not actually integrate it in the teaching learning process. Now the study was just guided by two main research questions. That the first one was actually looking at the status of ICT integration in early childhood education. Now that the second one is actually looking at the, the, the possibilities that the various ways or strategies that we can actually use to integrate ICTs in early childhood education, okay? So, so the focus is on those two major research questions. Now, based on the status of ICT integration in early childhood, to the best of my knowledge, by the time I was reviewing about this particular paper, I did not find any paper that specifically talks about ICT integration in early childhood education. What I found, a paper close to that, was talking about parents' perception of the use of ICT in early childhood education. And actually, the research was done in Njombe. But, but otherwise, you have a, a lot of other issues covering early childhood education. I, I don't know so far, probably that there could be a, a paper that documents that, but by the time of working on this, well, I didn't find any evidence. But that may not suggest that ICTs are not integrated in early childhood education. Probably they are integrated, but not documented, okay? Whatever the case, I think our job is to actually then look at the ways that we can integrate ICT uh, in early childhood education. And I'm such a strong believer that if we want to promote quality education in this particular country, then ICT can have a role to play in terms of enhancing quality in the education system or documents. And I also organized my, my, my documents using Max QDA version 18.2, so that I have the, the, the various themes related to those particular research questions. And since I advocate the integration of ICT in early childhood education, now let's quickly have a look at the role of ICT in early childhood education. Um, I, I think you remember from the first presentation on learning to play, playing to learn. So there is evidence that, enough evidence actually, we don't have to doubt about that, 
that children learn through play. Okay? So that is the premise. And technology has got the potential of actually helping children learn through play. Being that the case then, we can actually use ICT to, 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 to integrate in early childhood education because children will be learning through playing. Number two, uh, again, there is a number of research evidence that does suggest that the use of ICT tends to improve certain skills. And one of them is numeracy. So you might have like a, a gadget, maybe a calculator or a computer. Then the learners might actually learn some of the mathematical operations, addition, multiplications, divisions, and whatever, just using that particular gadget. At the same time, they might learn about language. You, you might have um, maybe a dictionary on your cellular phone, and then you have the pronunciation. So children can actually learn how to pronounce words correctly, and particularly if they are learning a foreign language. And third, on the cause of using the technological gadgets, particularly when they, they play games, we also promote their psychomotor skills, the, 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 the ability to actually touch and do things. So that will be promoted. So, so think of a child who is actually playing a game on the course of like pressing the, the joystick and whatever, so they actually develop those particular psychomotor skills. And likewise, learning is socially constructed. So we, we learn best when we actually collaborate with people, when we share uh, ideas. And I believe that when children, for example, share a particular uh, gadget, maybe it can be a laptop or an iPad or a tablet, when they share maybe playing a, a game on, on the course they actually learn. Another child might teach another child how to play that particular game so on the course, they actually get to understand each other's points of view. At the same time, ICT is known for improving performance of the learners. And this is partly because ICT has the role of actually simulating the real context into a kind of an authentic one. I'll give you an example. Maybe in the example of a virtual word. For example, maybe you, you, you plan to take uh, these young kids to a national park. You, you, you might have a virtual word of the national park where they can actually visit virtually the, the national park. They can see the animals, see the, the, the animal wardens and whatever without physically going to the, to the national park itself. At the same time, we can actually use a simulation. Maybe you want to demonstrate abstract concepts, such as maybe the blood the circulatory system, maybe the digestive system. So you can actually use technology to, to do that. And by doing so, we actually make learners learn in authentic context, using, of course, authentic tasks. Okay. Yeah. So, so in that, uh, 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 information and communication technologies has got that particular role of actually simulating the real world so that we can understand it much better. Now, so we have seen on the roles of IST and how it can actually enhance children's learning, but how can we integrate it in the teaching learning process, particularly in early childhood education? So I've got some, some strategies, and the list is not exhaustive, so you can also add your own list later on. So, so one of the ways we probably might use educational game, uh, 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 application, the apps, educational apps. And in this country, for example, we have got the, the Ubongo kids. They have got very good apps for children. And I think probably, probably most of you have seen those, those ones. 
but maybe with a show of hands, how many of you have actually come across Ubongo kids? Uh-huh. Yeah, these are actually uh, computer applications. So you can actually use your, your, your cellular phone using the Android, and then you can actually see those particular games. They have the, the, the numeracy, the, the, the reading, writing, and whatever, okay? At the same time, children can use those ICT gadgets. By, by gadgets, I mean the, 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 the hardware, the, the tools. So things like the, the iPods, the, the tablets, so you, you, you have the, the, the games, uh, or whatever learning tasks will be installed on those particular gadgets and then they can actually use those particular gadgets. Um, I'm just aware that the, the current infra infrastructure so far may not uh, help to do that, but I think that is the way to go. Number three, uh, since children have the ability to master technology at, at, at that very young age. I have the view that uh, at home, they need to be so I have the view that since the children can actually learn technology at, at a very, very young age, so I have the, the view that at home, we actually need to expose children to, to the various technological gadgets so, so that well, the moment they know to use them at home, chances are that they are going to use them very well at school. And actually, research has shown that those who have a great experience of using the apps at home, they are actually good users of those particular apps in school. And also, the, the, the teachers need to be actually very skilled in controlling children's interaction and learning. Now, I, I want to be very clear here. But by controlling, I don't mean that don't use that, use that, no. You, you, have, you, you, you focus your learning that this is the gadget, you play with the gadget, but make sure you focus on that particular aim, whatever the teacher has decided. The problem we have in this particular country, in many cases, we don't give our children these technological gadgets. How many of you at home give you your cellular phones to your children so that they can play with them? Let them play with them. And actually, you, you might realize that they are more competent than you as an adult. Okay? So give them that particular chance. And similarly, I think that the number five on teachers' professional development, we've been talking about that even from the point of inclusion. So if we really want to integrate ICT in the teaching learning process, then we need to have teachers who are actually competent enough to integrate ICT in the teaching learning process. Otherwise, that will be just a talk. And I likewise, we need, as we use, um, ICTs, we need to encourage collaboration. You know, in the past, it was assumed that if you share gadgets like computers, iPads, I mean desktops, uh, iPads, uh, laptops, you, you are poor. Today, sharing gadgets is not a sign of poverty because you actually learn from the person you are sharing that particular gadget. So, and I encourage uh, learners to actually share the gadgets as they share the gadgets, they help each other, they get to understand the views of each other, and then if they have got, got some conflicts, they can actually reconcile. But at the same time, we also need to have some technical support. Uh, well, there, there, are, there are different forms of technical support. One, we might have something like a, 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 a help desk. So, so there'll be a person in, within the school located on a particular office, so if you have some problems, then you go to that particular person, then the person will actually help you in the issues related to technology. We might have a, 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 a telephone, so you have an issue, you call, and then the person talks to you. We might have an online help, maybe it is a forum, 
So you have an issue, you post it on that particular forum, and then the person responds to your issue. Similarly, in, in the class, you might have the physical presence of the technician when a particular teacher is teaching, because things might go wrong. A projector may not work, so you have someone who can actually fix it. So, so the physical presence of the technicians in the class is also very important. Those are some of the elements of technical support that can be taken into account. And then, if you just remember our third, we have the, the, the documents plus the policies that emphasize on the use of ICT in the teaching learning process. But, but so far, it looks as if that these particular policies are sleeping and the toothless giants. They don't wake up, they don't bite. I'll explain that. We have very good policies, but actually if you come down to the ground, the practice is actually not as the policies state. So, so in that case, if we don't put good policies into practice, I think the policies are as good as if they are not there. Number nine, uh, innovation in many cases is a function of good leadership. So the moment you have got leaders who are visionary, imaginative, courageous, persuasive, they who can actually persuade people to probably get some support on the whatever, chances are that we can actually integrate ICT in early childhood education. Because if the leader is a laggard, chances are that he may not embrace technology. So technology being an innovation needs a visionary leader who can actually encourage other uh, teachers in the school to use that particular technology. Similarly, we, we need also to have proper ICT infrastructure. Well, when I was just going through the literature, in the countries that I looked at, I looked at a, 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 a research done in Mauritius, South Africa, Kenya, and Ghana. The issue of ICT infrastructure is a problem. So this is, appears to be a common problem, and for that matter, the government needs to do something to actually solve this particular issue. Now, to come to the end, so, so as I said earlier on, at least from what I have researched so far, it does seem that the, the, the way ICT is integrated in early childhood education is actually not clearly known. So if you want to know it, what should we do? We probably need to have classroom-based research so that we can actually see what takes place on the ground. So, and I encourage, actually after this one, I'm planning to, to, to do a, a classroom-based research to actually see how uh, the teachers integrate ICT in early childhood education. So, so I, I began by talking about the rationale for integrating ICT in early childhood education. Then I a bit talked about the status plus the research question then the role of ICT in promoting learning in early childhood, and then I've talked about the sort of strategies that we might use to integrate ICT in early childhood. So that marks the end of my presentation, and I thank you all of you for your keen attention, and I now welcome questions and comments. Thank you very much, Doctor. Can we clap to him again, please? Thank you for bringing up this very important topic on integration of ICT in childhood education. You actually, you revolved around two issues, that children are native ICT 
are native uh, of ICT, not us. That is uh, the key. And also, we have the policy that require us that we have to integrate ICT in our teaching. So if that is the case, then uh, what he's saying is, why are we not doing it? Uh, but he thinks that we are doing it, only it's not documented. Maybe. That's his suspicion. Uh, and therefore, let's hear what you are, is you are thinking. Uh, there are people here who are involved in ICE, ECE, and therefore maybe they are using it, they haven't documented it. So the door is open, please. I'm seeing. Yeah, I thank the presenter for the presentation, and uh, I could really say that Mwalimu wangu uh, umeitendea haki pepa yenyewe. That I have to agree, and I have to register that. I maybe uh, suggest as that there is a, a recent paper published by me and my colleague on the teacher preparation, preparedness for integrating ICT in pre-primary. So that is a point to, ne to note so that when you are uh, going on with your paper, you note that. Secondly, uh, is the issue of uh, the reality regarding the integration of ICT. As we have uh, put down there, uh, to our view, the commitment of teachers in integrating ICT is an issue, in line with their readiness. And there's an issue of uh, their competence. Because in our research, for instance, when we were doing, they were saying they are regarding ICT as a subject, that they would teach their children uh, using the ICT gadgets and not as a facilitating tool for teaching in, as in line with the play which is there suggested in our curriculum. But we all know as well, our classes, Sendio, na shule zetu na kokoe ni shukuru kwamba by then, waziri wa nishati, Professor Muhongo, nafikiri. Tunaona shule nyingi, at least zimepelekiwa umeme, lakini ishu ni kwamba, bado na dhani kuna haja ya kufanya, kwa sabu hizi ICT gadgets nyingi zitakuwa zita zita zinaitaji umeme, kwa mfano hizo tablets na iPads. Kwa sabu mabwana, uwezu kawapa doi kachacha afu kawanyanganya. Ujue tayari, relatedness to learn kwao, umesha i disturb. So that means, itabituwe na power, na hizo gadgets zenyewe. That again, ni upanda mbao mnadhani mnawona tutakuwa wapi. Lakini very very important ni walimu wetu hawa to develop capacity yao. Moja ku raise up readiness na commitment yao. Lakini pili capacity to utilize the available resources in terms of integrating ICT. Asante. teacher preparation on ICT. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mwalongo. Uh, this is also a very important area. And I was kind of listening and remembering what the earlier presenter said about the role of ICT in uh, early childhood uh, education. My, my question is really not necessarily directed to you, but to us all. What, okay, we have a policy that allows or provides for integration of ICT in early childhood education. But we also do have policies, especially in education, that uh, outlaw 
or prohibit use of cell phones? Because your first question was use of phones, and especially cell phones by students. And your first question was to ask parents if we allow our children to play with our phones. Uh, of course, the answers were maybe half-half. But if you ask the headmistresses and headmasters how many of them allow their uh, students or pupils to play with phones, I don't know what the answer will be because you know uh, even the, the letters that we get from schools who tell us that cell phones are not allowed, your child should not come with a phone, and so on and so forth. So how, how are we striking the balance between allowing, living today, and clinging to rule-based control rather than developing uh, value-based control. So I, that's why I said it's not necessarily uh, geared towards you answering it, but us uh, contemplating on it and really finding a policy recommendation. How can we start strike that balance of living today and allowing our children, but also building uh, developing a culture that will control will be value based rather than rule based. Thank you. Thank you very much. Asante. Nashukuru kwa presentation nzuri ambayo imegusa maeneo ya muhimu lakini pia imetaja watu wenye mahitaji maalum kwamba wanaweza kunufaika na ujifunzaji kupitia teknolojia. Ni kweli daktari ameuliza ametoa ame changamoto nzuri na <coughs> kwenye 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 hizi simu kwa mimi naona tunaweza kabisa tukaruhusu tuka wanafunzi wakazitumia. Kwa mfano hapa kwenye hii tablet nime download offline uh, educational apps nyingi ukienda kwenye Play Store ukaandika tu educational apps zinakuja za aina mbalimbali mbali. unachagua kama ni numerous unachagua kama ni, 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 ni games anything you need ambazo ni free alafu ukizi download zinakuwepo hapa umezihifadhi baadaye hata kama ukitoa line unampa tu mtoto anaendelea kutumia vizuri kwa hiyo in, kimsingi inategemea na maandalizi ya nini tunataka tutumie tuwekeze kwa mfumo upi na ukiwaachia wanafanya vizuri sana sana kwa hiyo daktar mimi naona tunaweza kabisa tukaweka utaratibu wa kutumia hizi uh, apps ambazo nyingi zinapatikana pia online unazipata una, una na watoto wanatumia na ni kweli uzoefu unatuonesha kwamba watoto wenye ulemavu amesema kitu kizuri pale nimeshindwa kulitamka ile neno vizuri la Kiingereza inaitwa psycho psychomota uh, skills eh kwa kweli kwa watoto wenye ulemavu ambao wanashindwa kujimudu eh, utendaji wa viungo vyao wakiwekewa utaratibu mzuri wa, wa, wa kutumia hivi vifaa kwa kugusa gusa tu vina, vina, vimeonesha vina manufaa makubwa sana kwenye ku, ku, kuongeza ile uwezo wa utendaji wao kwa hiyo ninafikiri ni, 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 ni ushauri mzuri kwamba uh, tunaweza tukawekeza sana kwenye teknolojia sana na ikawa ni rahisi pia katika kumfundisha mtoto. Labda ni share hapa sana sana. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody who wants to continue with ICT and ECE? Asante naitwa Joshua Moshi natoka CCC na imefuatilia presentation ya Dr. Actually ameongea vitu vizuri ambavyo vinaweza vikatusaidia sana katika kuboresha. Sema changamoto yangu naiona katika kuruhusu ICT katika ufundishaji katika hii elimu ya awali. Je, kwanza serikali imejiandaa kwa hilo? Hilo swala la kwanza ambalo tunaweza tukajiuliza. Nimejiandaa kwa nini kwa sababu sehemu kubwa ya walimu wanaandaliwa na serikali. Je, vile vile vya walimu infrastructure zake kwa mfano 
vyo vya elimu ya elimu ya awali zile infrastructure zake ambazo za kumjengea uwezo ile mwalimu ambaye atakuja kufundisha huko zinaruhusu ICT application ambayo hiyo ni changamoto sasa sisi kama wadau tunaweza kuwa tuanze ku raise voice kwanza hapo kushawishi serikali kuanza kuboresha vyo vya walimu katika infrastructure za ICT kiasi kwamba mwalimu anapoenda pale chuoni aanze kupata hiyo matumizi ya ICT lakini mwalimu haandaliwi pale chuoni mwalimu anaendelea kuanzia huko chini je hizi shule zetu za sekondari zinatumia ICT kwa kiasi gani ili kwanza kumjengea ile readiness ya kwanza kutumia ICT kama njia moja wapo ya kumsaidia kufanya kazi vizuri ukiangalia sehemu kubwa ya shule zetu ICT inaonekana ni kama ni kitu cha anasa yani shule ambayo inatumia ICT application inaonekana kama ni shule ambayo ina hadhi ya fulani sasa majority ya wanafunzi wetu wanasoma katika hizi shule za public ambapo ni hizi shule za serikali ambazo infrastructure zake zote asilimia kubwa katika swala la ICT hazikizi mahitaji kwa maana hiyo tunahitaji pia kuanza kwa kuangalia kama ni wamasishaji basi wamasishaji waanzie kwenye level ya msingi sekondari ili kiasi kwamba huyu mwanafunzi atakapoenda kwa sasa akiopt kwenda kusoma ualimu basi aweze kuwa na msingi ambao ametoka ametoka nao sambamba na hilo sera zetu za elimu zinasemaje pale dokta amezungumzia kuhusiana na matumizi ya, ya, ya simu mashuleni nayo hii kutumia shule simu mashuleni inaonekana kama ni anasa wakati simu ni kifaa kizuri sana ingeweza kumsaidia mwanafunzi kupata maarifa mbalimbali katika fomu ya multimedia pamoja na soft copies nyingine lakini sera za elimu zenyewe haziruhusu hivyo sasa basi inabidi turudi pia kwenye sera kuzireview ili zianze ku encourage walimu wa ruhusu wanafunzi kutumia nini simu sawa tunaangalia kuna upande kwamba matumizi ya simu yanaweza kutumika katika vibaya la kwa mfano yako baadhi ya mashirika yameanzisha project nyingi sana za e-learning na wamepata fedha kwenda kuintroduce e-learning kwa upande wa shule za sekondari ni pamoja na matu, kuencourage matumizi ya tablet mimi mwenyewe mwaka 2016 nimeendesha mradi mkubwa tu wa kuencourage ICT kwa kutumia tablet mashuleni na tulikuwa tunaendesha kwenye shule za makanisa lakini na baadhi ya shule za serikali kitu kilichokuhamisha ile mradi kwa asilimia kubwa shule za serikali kwa sababu ilishindikana kabisa ku implement hizo project kwa shule za serikali kwa sababu kwanza sera ya elimu ambayo tunasema ni elimu pasipo kuwa na malipo internet connectivity inapatikana vipi kama mwanafunzi kama shule haina kapisa haina fundi ya kuweza kuruhusu zile shule ziweze kupata internet sasa unakuwa una project una, una application au sometimes una platform ambayo ile platform ile ili mwanafunzi aweze kuiconnect kupata ile content iliyo kwenye platform lazima apate connectivity ya internet internet sio bure lakini sasa shule za serikali nyingi hazina fundi za internet kwa hiyo pale matumizi ya ICT pia yanakuwa ni magumu unless otherwise hizo application zote ziwe ni offline na application ambazo ziko offline nyingi hazina content ambazo ni ni nzuri kwa sababu wengi wanaotengeneza content wanafanya biashara kwa maana hiyo lazima wazi restrict ili waweze kupata faida kidogo zile ambazo wameweka ni free from air ukizichunguza zina a lot of advertised adverts kiasi kwamba zina mislead mwanafunzi kama hatapata mwelekeo mzuri kwa maana hiyo kuna haja pia kuangalia hizi sera zetu kwa mfano sera hii ya elimu bure inawezekana ikawa ni nzuri lakini pia ikawa ni changamoto sana katika kutekeleza mambo mengine ambayo yatamsaidia mwanafunzi kuweza kupata elimu kama inavyotakikana unless otherwise tuseme kwamba serikali iwekeze kwa kwa hela nyingi sana kwamba shule zetu zote ziwe ziko free from ziwe na access free ya internet kitu ambacho nacho ni kigumu sana swala so, lingine katika ICT infrastructure ni ni ni, ni, um, ni, ni remoteness of the schools kiangalia shule baadhi ya shule zetu nyingi sana ziko katika maeneo ambayo ni magumu sana kupata hata mitandao ya Vodacom, Airtel na nini kiasi kwamba hata kama itatokea kwamba we unatoa ofa kwa mfano mimi nasema naweza nikatoa mfano nimi, tulipeleka huduma hiyo kwa shule ambazo ziko katika mazingira magumu ya IC tukasema tuka tuwapeleke tablet bure tulikuwa tunatoa kila shule tablet 40 issue ikawa inakuja tukasema tutafsiri watu watafsiri na wafadhili la connectivity tukasema tuwalipie bando kila, kila mwezi GB 40 lakini issue nyingine ikawa inakuja watapata wapi internet sasa kutokana na location ya ile shule ilivyo sasa kuna haja pia kama tunaposambaza umeme kwenye mashule yetu na ni Tanzania nzima 
basi pia na hii internet kwenye TV ipambazo kwa, kwa, kwa kasi sana kwa hiyo dokta kama unawezekana katika research yako ukaisambaza ukaendelea uka ukaingia zaidi ndani zaidi kuangalia the issue of connectivity ili kama ni njia moja wapo ya wanafunzi ku access ICT materials from the internet na itawezekana tuangalie changamoto zilizopo kwa Tanzania na jinsi gani tunaweza tukazitatua tukashauri serikali kwamba izitatue changamoto kwa kufanya A B C na D ikawa ni kitu kirahisi tunasema kuna mkongo wa taifa lakini mkongo wa taifa uko mjini tu haujasambaa kiasi hicho sasa je serikali inajenga hatua gani kuhakikisha kwamba mkongo wa taifa unasambaa nchi nzima kiasi kwamba tuweze kupata internet kwa bei rahisi lakini pia gharama za internet connectivity ni kubwa sana nchini kwa hiyo kudownload video ya dakika moja, dakika tatu, kwa, ni, ni, ni kazi kubwa sana. Tasa, ukiangalia nchi nyingine, kwanza speed ni kubwa ya internet connectivity. Unezo kadownload paka MB mbili kwa sekunde. Uku kwetu inakuwa ni ngumu sana. Kitu ambacho, tunabidi tuya tukiangalie. Connectivity na speed, lakini na garama ambazo natakuwa kwepo. Kama tunataka kweli ku strengthen is ICT from the early childhood education. Otherwise tutakuwa tunaongea kwenye dialogue kama hizi lakini mwisho wa siku bado tuweze kwenda. Lakini ukiangalia ni bado tuko nyuma sana katika matumizi ya ICT. Lakini pia inawezekana pia viongozi wetu wengi walisoma miaka ambayo ICT ilikuwa ni issue. Kwa hiyo bado hawajabadilika mind na hawataki kuja kufanya kubadilika. Sio wote lakini asilimia kubwa wako hivi. Kiasi kwamba wanafikiri kama ICT bado ni anasa kitu ambacho ni kitu kizuri sana. Asante. Thank you very much. Asante sana kwa uh, mtu amada. Tunashukuru sana. Ninafikiri uh, kwa ujumla lazima tu realize uh, teknolojia inakimbia sana kuliko tunavyoenda. Hiyo ni moja. Lakini la pili tujue um, waweka maamuzi ni nani na watu wa maamuzi. Watu wa maamuzi sisi kama wadau wakubwa wa elimu na tunachombo kimetuleta pamoja kwanza tukiweza kutambua ni fanikio ni nani anafanya maamuzi ya hivi vivyote ni watu ambao hawako exposed na ICT na ndio wanaotufanyia maamuzi kwa hiyo tujue kwamba wao wenyewe wasipoelewa wataweka vikwazo ndio maana unaona mtoto akikutwa na simu ana, anaweza hata akafukuzwa shule au vikao vikubwa. Kwa hiyo hiyo ni mentality. Hiyo nasema kwenye level ya decision makers na policy level. Tukija hapa katikati kwenye wale owner wa shule. Mfano shule nyingi za makanisa. Unakuta mamlaka ya shule, the owner of the school is the one who make decision. Aje na simu au asije na simu. Kwa hiyo mtoto wako na idadi kubwa ya Watanzania tunapeleka watoto wetu shule zile za kati na zasema zakati kutokana na ubora na vitu vingine ndio watanzania walio wengi tulioko hapa tunapeleka mtoto katika shule fulani fulani lakini tunaposema elimu kwa wote tukaweka nukta ni changamoto elimu kwa wote na kwa wakati sasa watoto wanavyofika ECE anakuja kujua mambo ya ICT yuko la saba tunampeleka kwenye view akimaliza form 4 tunampeleka short codes akasome computer kuna changamoto la mwisho na ombi langu ambalo ninaliomba kuna shule zinazofanya vizuri sana sisi kama tenmet tuweze kutengeneza mfumo wa kufanya study tour tukija hapa tuje na experience za practices kwenye grassroots level hizo tutengeneze kabisa tutafute wadau wachangie kama ni organization itatutuma tukija hapa tuwe kweli na role model demonstration za watu ambao wana apply ICT tuisaidie serikali tusaidie kila mmoja na tuondoe mentality ya complaining tuje na mentality ya solution sasa tenmet tulalamike wizara ilalamike wadau tulalamike watoto wanatotolea macho Mungu awabariki Asante. Uh, kwanza namshukuru sana Dr kwa kwa presentation yake kwa jinsi ambavyo ameweza uh, kupresent kwa passion. Na ingawaje yeye ye ni immigrant lakini inaonekana <laughs> ameshabadilishwa ameshakuwa disciple wa nani wa hii technology ICT. 
Ishu ni hii. Kwa, kwa mtazamu wangu, ishu ni ishu ya sera. Sera ikisha kubadilika kila alafu pili ni ishu ya nia. Pale ya kwenye nia, pana njia. Sisi tunaona kwa mfano matumizi ya ICT, kwa mfano hasa simu hizi za mkononi. Wengi wazazi, wengi na wa, watunga sera wanaona kama hiyo ni ivo. Simu inaonekana ka shetani au ka pepo. Kwa sababu wanajua watoto wataangalia picha mbaya. That is the only thing we are telling our children. That when you give, you allow them to use mobile phones, they will have opportunity to, to watch pornography. That is the only thing. We are not telling them about the good side. We are just showing them this is the, there is only the, the while we, we as parents and decision makers, we even love our mobile phones than our babies. When you go to the toilet, you have your mobile phone. Everywhere you forget, you can, if say for example, you are going to Udom, you discover that you have left your phone. You go back home and pick your phone. And children are watching us, how we are attached to our phones. But then we are calling, this is a devil, it's not for you. Okay, I don't want to talk more. Lakini we have our member, Kulture Direct. Ambao, wanatua elimu ya sekondari, kwa njia hiyo yu, hata isimu ya touch, you can use it. It's just a matter of making a de deliberate decision that we want to change and we want to use technology. Atuwezi kukwenda chuokiku mtu, anaenda chuokiku, anaenda kujifunza computer science. Na huko kuingine kote ya metoka kule kwetu katesh. Hajawai kuona computer ya naonekanaji au ndi wanachorewa na mwalimbu. Kwa li ubaoni kwa mba computer ya nakuwa hivi, hii ni screen di, au na shut down. Alafu nakuja kunisha chuokiku awe ICT. And then you expect sisi kwenye technology tuwezi kompiti na wengine nda kuwa ngumu. Asante mwezi jaji. Thank you very much. Dr. Mwalongo, it's your time. Please don't respond to every... Kuna mwenye burning question? Okay, be brief, please. If you can use... Thank you. Dr. Malongo, please use three minutes only. Thank you. Yeah, that, first of all, I appreciate for your good comments and, and uh, recommendations. I, I start with this burning issue of the, the use of uh, cellular phones, in particular in schools. My understanding is that uh, but I think that the use is not prohibited. What is prohibited is actually going into the school with the cellular phones, lottering in the school with the cellular phones. But as a teacher, I can have my cellular phones or probably get them from the rest of the other teachers and I can use them as a teaching learning tool. Now with that, I'll also suggest students may be allowed to come with the cellular phones in the schools all we need to do is to actually control how they use them. They might come with them in the school, and then they put them in a particular place. But if it, this is now a session, they are supposed to use them. They pick their phones, use them for that particular purpose, then bring back those particular cellular phones. So then I think that is just quite possible, and it can be done. In that, then, we need to actually make sure that that the learners use technology intelligently and responsibly. Because the, the, the way actually you use the technology, the way you post whatever, what you post in the various media, whatever, that does reflect the way you think. So it reflects your personality. Actually, people might read whether you are on the right mind or on, on, on the wrong mind when you are posting something. At the same time, we need to post things that don't offend other people. And that is the responsible use of that. Uh, the, the issue of remote schools. And actual, I think technology can actually solve that. We, we don't have to, to, re, to, to, to rely on the, the, this uh, electricity. We might use probably some solar power in remote areas. And then they will have access to actually whatever we want them to have access. So technology can actually be a solution to, to some of the areas that we've been talking about. I think because of time, I stop here. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Okay, experience guy. Kwenye Play Store, ambazo noti academic, ni naomba niseme kabisa wazi kwamba sio kweli. Ukienda kwenye Play Store, hata wewe mwenyewe, kwa mtoto wako, wewe andika tu educational apps, ni nazo hapa. Tumegawa simu miyamoja stini kwa wazazi, wenye watoto wenye ule mavu, wanazitumia. Kuna mtoto mmoja yuko maweteta rombo, hamefanya mtiani wa darasa la nne mwaka huu, kwa mfumo maalumu wa msaidizi wa mwalimu imemsaidia sana uh, 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 offline apps chochote tunachokitaka una mtimu yetu na mwalimu anamsaidia ku translate kwenye Kiswahili lakini zipo ni nazo hapa chache naweza nikaachia hii simu ikaendelea kutembea una yani unaona we mwenyewe unachagua una, una mtoto ana, anaweza akatrace mtoto anaweza aka, akachora hapa akatumia rangi hapa mtoto asiyeandika anaweza akawa anachora maua kila akigusa tu mkono namna hii rangi mbalimbali zinatokea kwa hiyo naomba tu niseme wazi kabisa kwamba sio kweli kwamba uh, kwenye kwenye oh, za offline eh? na tu, ni, ni kweli internet ni gharama lakini si kweli humu tuliomo ndani huwa hatu hatupakui vitu kwa kutumia mb nyingi wakati mwingine ni, ni, ni kwenye vitu vya kawaida tu Kukwenye laba ni, laba ni ile tu ile intention. Seriousness kwenye kuinvest kwenye elimu. Hiyo ndiyo tukianzia hapo, tutafika vizuri. Kwenye kwenye kusema hiyo habari ya experience kwamba. Experience inaonesha uh, inawezekana. Uh, offline apps ambazo ni academic zaidi ya ubongo ziko nyingi. Labda changamoto ni ile lugha. Ni kweli za, za kiswahili ni chache. Lakini kwa kweli ambazo ni purely academic ziko nyingi. Tena hasa kwa watoto wadogo. No, but you say Santa San. Yes. Asante, uh, we have a few minutes to go to our last session. Lakin na mi pia nilikuwa si jamalizia. Ni wapi experience? Was it in 2017 nili enda Sierra Leone? Nili enda kwenye conference kama hi. Ilikuwa ni international conference. Ni maswala haya haya quality education. Walialikuwa wanafunzi wa form 2. Walikuja na smartphone zao. Na wa, ruksa wanazitumia simu. Sasa hawa kwetu wanapata mimba marakibao. Siju wana simu au ni, kwa sababu wanapata mimba kwa sababu hawana simu au kwa sababu wana simu. We have to think critically. Kusema kwamba simu uzi tawaharibu. Simu uzi tawaharibu. Kwanza unapo psychologically walimu kuhapa. hapa. Unapo mzuia sana mtu kitu fulani ndio unamjengea motivation. Yesu alikuwa akiwaponya wagonjwa kambe usimuambie mtu. Haendi akikutana na mtu wa kwanza na muambia. So similarly, tunapo sema kwamba simu tunapo wazuia watoto wetu kwamba kuona simu ni evil badalia kuambia mambo ya lioko. Hata sasi watu wazima pia wanaangalia hivyo vitu ambavo na nani. Wanaangalia, wanakuwa kwenye simu, wengine wanaangalia, haya ambayo naonekana ni hivyo. Kwa hiyo, mimi nafikiri watoto wanahitaji kuwa guided na kuwa allowed. Secondary, misi oni sababu. Lagi pia nimekaa UK, ataka tuwatuwa primary, wana simu. Wanaenda shule kwa sababu ya security na pigia mzazi wake. Sisi ni shida ni attitude yetu. Yani ni ule attitude mentality hapa. Kwa uki, hasa ukikutana na mfanya maamuzi kama anaandika barua kwa karatasi anaandikiwa na alafu secretary anamwandikia mara mbili kumi inarudi huyo ukimfanya afanye maamuzi kwamba tunataka kutumia ICT itakuwa ngumu sio hapa kwetu mimi nazungumza habari ya kule kule Uganda kama mfanya maamuzi yeye anaandika kwa kalamu anampa secretary alafu secretary anamletea correction back and forth alafu muambie sasa turuhusu matumizi ya ICT tena hata kwenye early childhood Na fikiri atakuona, yani wewe, utakuwa unaonekana mtu ajabu sana. Lakini change of attitude. Hata nakumbuka kompita zilivo kuja, zilikuwa zinapingwa. Zilikuwa zinapingwa, zinaonekana kwamba ndo, sijui ndo mpinga kristo atapita uko sinu shetani kwenye mabenki, badai mabenki hakaanza kutumia. Aha, badai, ikawa hivo hivo. Lakini tukianza kutumia watu wa private sector, kwa wingi, ili wimbi haiwezi kuzuiliwa. A change. 
hii ya kwenye nani kwenye technology haiwezi kuzuiwa it's just a matter of time lakini watafaidi watoto wa watoto wale wanaosoma private schools lakini sisi ambao watoto wetu wanaenda kwenye shule za kayumba watakutana nazo university hiyo ndio shida hiyo ndio shida ya hiyo ndio shida kwa sababu wengine wale wa private sector hata kwenye ECD anaiweka na anapata wazazi wengi na wazazi wako tayari wanalipia tukikutana huko chuo kikuu kayumba na santa na santa kayumba kayumba si na santa nani santa yohana ndio hapo mapambana hapo tokea kwa hiyo mimi nafikiri bado tunaweza ku make use of karibu mheshimiwa mimi nilikuwa nakusubiria tu ili kiti chako kisikae baridi asante sana mimi nawashukuru kwanza kwa kwa kuwa wavumilivu lakini nafikiri hapa ndio tunamaliza maliza sasa uh, tunamsubiri mgeni rasmi atatokea hapa wakati wowote ili tuweze kumaliza shughuli yetu uh, nimefurahi presentation ya dr malongo inajaribu kuweka msingi kwamba kwa nini tutumie uh, ICT unajua ICT ni neno pana sio sio simu za mkononi tu yani ICT baka redio ile ni ICT sio kama inaeleweka e, kwa hiyo zamani tulikuwa na vipindi vya redio mashuleni hebu tuanzie hapo kwanza tujiulize vile vipindi vya redio vimeishia wapi je kama mashuleni tulipeleka TV zile program ambazo ni educative za kwenye TV zimeishia wapi maana tunachofanya sasa tusije tukaanza kufanya technology lip frogging kwenye mambo ya ICT kuna kitu kinaitwa technology lip frogging yani unarukia technology unakwenda kama chura hivi la halafu kabla nyingine uja itumia vizuri nilikuwa sisi kule kwetu uh, kule ninakotokea tunasikiliza sana radio Malawi kuliko radio Tanzania sasa vile vipindi ni vipindi vizuri ni vipindi vya shuleni watoto wanajieleza wanafanya hivi kuna mwalimu amerekodi anarekodiwa anafundisha kipindi fulani kwa hiyo ukisikiliza ile redio hata wale watoto ambao hawana walimu wazuri huko kwao wakisikiliza kile kipindi unashangana wenyewe wanapata vitu fulani sasa vile vipindi vimeishia wapi labda tuanze kujiuliza hapo kabla hatujaanza kuwagawia watoto simu za mkononi mimi ninachoamini ni kwamba kila kitu kinawezekana isipokuwa ni lazima tuwe na utaratibu. Unajua matumizi ya vitu yanatokana na malezi. Unaweza saa hizi usipowaandaa wale watoto unaweza kaenda kuwagawia simu za mkononi halafu au kawaruhusu watumie simu za mkononi siku moja wanaamka walimu wote wameibiwa simu na wazazi wote nyumbani wameibiwa simu. Kwa sababu gani hawajawekewa utaratibu? Sasa hivi tume advance sana kwenye technology kama alivyokuwa naweza Dr. Malongo. Kuna, unaweza ukawa na simu ambazo zimekuwa programmed kutokuruhusu vitu vingine vya ovyo ovyo hivi kupenya. Kwa hiyo mwanafunzi anakuwa na simu ambayo ina limit. Ni kama zilivyo calculator tu sio kila calculator anafanya kila kitu. Ziko zile zinaitwa scientific calculator kwa ajili ya watu wa level fulani tu na vi calculator hivi ya kawaida vya vya hesabu za magazi juto hizi board mass eh? sasa unaweza uka, ukawa na simu za design kama hizo na kama una uwezo wa kuwa na simu kama hizo hawa wenzetu sasa hivi wanaotengeneza hizo simu wenyewe sasa sababu wameshakuwa sehemu ya jamii yetu tukiwa influence wanaweza wakatengenezea simu ambazo zinakuwa mtu anaweza kaingia mle akapata access kwenye, lakini zita reject certain programs ambazo sio educative kwa hiyo mtoto anaweza kuwa na simu lakini atakapotaka kufanya kitu fulani ambacho kiko nje ya umri wake au nje ya eneo lake la 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 la, 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 la shughuli ile ina inakata. Ina, ina, ina Kwa hiyo uwezekano upo isipokuwa ni lazima tuwe very systematic. Vinginevyo tukikurupuka tu tukasema haya sasa tunaogea tutashangaa hizo simu sasa nza kupatia mimba tu wala sio tena simu za kusaidia watoto wajifunze. Unajua wakati fulani kuangalia macho yetu usije ameungwaje. Yaani mambo mabaya tunaangalia kwa haraka zaidi kuliko mambo mazuri. Yaani jicho linapenda sana lione. Yaani mtu akipita hapa mtu yuko uchi. Watu wote tutageuka. Wakati akipita aliyevaa wala hakuna anayegeuka. Au anageuka mtu mmoja tu. Sasa macho mara nyingi yako hivyo yanapenda kuona kitu ambacho ni extra. Sasa 
mapornograph hayo na nini umeshaona ni kivutio cha watu wazima na watoto pia sasa unaweza kushangaa usipokuwa mwangalifu watoto wakashinda wanaangalia hayo tu lakini kule kwenye ulimwengu mwingine kule tunakosema wameruhusu na wenyewe sasa hivi wanasafa kuna safari kubwa sana wala utizione kama Ulaya ni mfano mzuri sana kulea watoto hapana wala Amerika kule sasa hivi mimi na dada yangu siku moja nilimhurumia sana nilikuwa UK dada yangu anataka kumchapa mtoto wake ilibidi aende kwanza aka connect simu aka disconnect simu zote ndio aweze kwanza kumpiga na kalipopigwa tu kamemaliza kupigwa kakatoka mbio kwenda kwenye simu kakafika pale kakawa kameona simu imechakuwa disconnected kakaangua kilio kwa mara ya pili maana kametoka hapa mbio help 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 hapo kwa kanaita polisi hapo kwa hiyo wakati mwingine ni lazima tuchekeche vizuri ni simu za design gani tutawaruhusu watoto wazitumie na simu gani hawataruhusiwa kuzitumia Hizi sielewi kwa uzoefu wa mwalimu pala alipo kwa naeleza kuhusu hizi walizo gawa. Sijajua zilikuwa na restrictions gani kuhusu zile programs. Lakini ni muhimu sana hizi kuzi block some of the, the programs. Ambazo mtoto zinaweza ka mfanya concentrate zaidi huko. Akasahau kwamba ile ni kwa ili ya education purpose. Of course kila kitu ni education. Lakini what time do you want to learn what? Ndiyo mana hata mtaala wetu haujamruhusu mtoto wa shule ya msingi kujifunza mambu ya university. Unakuenda tara tibu kulingana na na levo yako unaona na watoto wetu wanaharibikiwa kirahisi sana kwa sababu wanaiga iga vitu hata yani bila kuuliza mtoto wa Kiafrika huwa haulizi ulizi sana kwa nini hiki kitu kiko hivi yeye yeah, anachouliza ni kwamba nataka hiki lakini kumuuliza kwa nini nataka hicho hawezi kusema ndio maana sasa tunashangaa jamaa umeanza kuvaa suruali zimekatika kwenye magoti kule tayari na watu huko tayari wanavaa suruali zimekatwa kwenye magoti hawaulizi ni kwa nini suruali watu wamelegeza nani huenda walikuwa na majipu kuna nchi fulani watu walikuwa na majipu wakalegeza suruali ili Majipu ya siwa nani suruali siumize nani watu wameshaiga na wenyewe na vas za mtindo huo. Yaani wanawake kuna mitindo ya Chicago kule wa kuvaa vinani vile vibangiri kwenye miguu sio mna hata vikuku sijui hatujui hata vilianzia wapi anayevaa vikuku ni mtu gani ukivaa mguu mmoja maana yake nini na ukivaa miguu yote miwili maana yake nini sisi wakwetu wameona amependeza tumeshavaa tunatembea nazo ukifika mahali ukakamatwa na mtu sana sasa bwana twende basi kwenye biashara unaanza kusema unaandalilisha sasa wewe mwenyewe umeweka alama hii kwani hii alama una yani kuna vitu vya namna hiyo ni muhimu sana tukawalea watoto wetu kuchambua vitu kuelewa maana yake nini kuvaa heleni sikio moja kwenye ulimwengu huko ilikotokea ilikuwa na maana ya gani kwa hiyo ni muhimu sana kufanya masuala ya study masuala ya technology lip frogging sio nani sio move nzuri sana lazima tuchekeche vizuri watu wakae chini kwa mfano wakina malongo wakutane na wataalamu wengine wa ICT wakae chini waangalie how do we go about kwa darasa la kwanza tukitaka kumruhusu atumie simu atumie program zipi na simu hiyo hiyo ya aina gani twende hivyo hivyo mpaka tunafika kwenye level ile ya juu ndipo tunapoweza kusimamia vinginevyo itakuwa ni, ni problem mimi ni my view kwa hiyo mimi nashukuru ni mchango wangu lakini matumizi ya vitu hivi ni muhimu sana watoto wetu na wenyewe wakakuwa wakawa wanavifahamu lakini tutengeneze growth stages za namna ya kuingia kwenye hizi technologies baada ya kusema hayo nawashukuru sana nimkaribishe mzee wa womu hapo anawezekana nataka kuomu hapo kwa namna nyingine karibu asante mwenyekiti mimi nilikuwa na ombi dogo tu tumeona pepa karibu tisa nafikiri na zote nimeona ni nzuri na ni, ni zinasaidia. Kwa hiyo nikwa namshukuru Dr. Telia at least alitoa ile hard copy tungependa pia kutupate at least wengine zinaweza zikatusaidia kwa hapo hapo baadaye ni kitu kizuri sana. Sijajua listija na nyosha labda kuna 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 njia nzuri lakini ilikuwa ni hoja yangu hiyo kwamba tusipate. Asante. Asante, nataka nijibu kuhusu hizo papers. Hizi papers zinaandaliwa utaratibu wa kuzipublish kwenye conference proceedings na utaratibu wake ni kwamba baada ya hizi presentations waandishi wetu hawa wa hizi papers wameshapata inputs wamepewa wiki mbili kwenda kuziimprove kuingiza hayo maoni mapya yaliyojitokeza hapa kuna ndugu zetu kutoka wizara ya elimu kuna ndugu zetu wametoka Tamisemi wametoa input zao hapa kuna wazoefu kutoka kwenye mashirika mbalimbali wameimprove pepa zetu figures mbalimbali tuliko nazitaja kwenye pepa wameimprove na kuna mambo mapya mazuri yameibuka haya ni lazima warudi wakaya boreshe wakisha boresha ndani ya wiki mbili hizi pepa zote zitapelekwa tenement tenement watazipublish 
kwenye jono moja ambayo ndio tunaita conference proceedings. Sasa hii tenement itaona namna ya kuweza kushare kwa wadau sasa kama mambo yaliyojitokeza katika nani katika katika hii conference. Nafikiri wanaweka kwenye website yao. I, I, I think so. Uh, coordinator labda atatusaidia kuelezea zaidi utaratibu utakapotumika. Lakini ndio utaratibu ndio huo. Na ile paper inakuwa ni copyright. Huwezi kumgawia mtu saa hizi hapo kamwambia nenda na paper yako afu kesho kuona mepublish. Hii ni mali ya mtu. Ametoa ili ametengeneza hiyo paper kama hivyo na atakuwa responsible kwa lolote jema au baya linalotokana na paper hiyo. Sasa akikumilikisha wewe saa hizi ukaenda kupata matatizo huko mbele itakuwaje. Eh? Kwa hiyo ndio maana tunasema kwamba ni vizuri sisi kwa sababu tume, tume, tumeomba na tenement tuandae hizi. Huu mzigo tutawamwagia tenement. Tenement wao watajua kwa kupeleka. Kwa hiyo tenement na wenyewe wakiona kuna tatizo wasema ah bwana na sisi tulimwalika tu mjumbe na nini basi mkono wangu wajibike kwa ajili ya masuala ya inclusive education. Kwa hiyo tutakwenda kwa mtindo wa namna hiyo. Lakini hizi paper zote mtazipata lakini kwa kupitia kwenye website ya tenement. Nafikiri nimejibu vema sijui kama nanyongeza yote coordinator. Ndio process leo. Nadhani daktari ume exhaust kile ambacho kimeulizwa. Uh, mtupe tu muda wa wiki hizo mbili. Alafu tutazituma kwenye emails zenu wa shiriki wote baada ya kuwa tuna hiyo nani published paper au na hiyo hiyo document. Lakini kwa sasa hivi nadhani tungechukua yote aliyosema daktari. Naungana naye. Asante sana. Uh, sijui uh, labda kwa wakati huu kama kuna sasa sio papers wala sio maswali wala yani tupate ile general overview ya mambo ambayo pengine uh, wizara mnaweza mkawa na watu wawakilishi wetu kutoka wizarani mnaweza kawa na general comments kuhusiana na uendeshaji mzima wa conference na paper presentations lakini pia washiriki wengine mnaweza mkawa na an overview idea kwa ajili ya improvement of future conference eh, kwa sababu hii conference tunafanya kila mwaka if there is any general comment kwa sababu baada ya mgeni rasmi kuja kumaliza habari ya hapa hapa tutakuwa tayari tumemaliza tuna anua jamvi kwa hiyo tunaomba ukinyosha mkono usinyoshe tena kuanza kusema nataka nitoe mawazo yangu kuhusu ICT ni education. Yaani tunataka utoe general comments kuhusiana na nini na conference. Sasa naanza huko alafu nitakwenda hivi. Asante sana. Mimi naomba nitumie lugha yetu ya taifa sasa kwa general overview. Uh, mimi hu, mimi ni mara yangu ya kwanza kuhudhuria conference ya Tenmet na nimeona ni nzuri ni educative inatoa opportunity ya kuweza kuchangia na ku, kusikika kama unataka kusikika kwa sisi wengine ambao tumekaa kwenye huduma za umma kwa muda mrefu nime kuangalia huu kumbi niliona kwamba mlikuwa mmelenga kualika watu wengi lakini naona mahudhurio ni madogo ladha pendekezo langu kwa kwa baadaye kwamba labda taarifa zingeenda mapema tungewatumia zaidi kama wanavyofanyaga wenzetu tuwatumie zaidi wenyeji pia kwa sababu watu wa Dodoma Dodoma kabisa wa Dodoma kwa maana ya mkoa na pengine jiji ya waona labda ukiondoa wa, 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 wale wa, wa, wa shule kwa hiyo mimi nadhani labda wakati huo tu tuangalie kualika na hao wenyeji pia na wenyewe kwa sababu wageni wanaweza kawa wamekuja wanabana wana mambo mengine anakuja kwa lile jambo muhimu anaondoka lakini kwa hapa labda tutakuwa na mahudhurio zaidi na pengine tukapata na mchango wa kutoka kwenye grassroots ambao tunahitaji asante asante na mimi nitaka kutoa pendekezo hizi mada ambazo zinakuwa zinawasilishwa zinakuwa ni mahususi kwenye maeneo maalum kila mada inakuwa inalenga eneo fulani na sasa tunakuwa na watu kutoka serikalini ningeshauri kwamba ile miariko iwe inalenga kwenye eneo husika kama kuna mada itakayokuwa inazungumza special education 
basi tuwe tunakuwa na mtu ambaye anatoka serikalini ni wa eneo hilo kama inazungumzia masuala ya tivet kuwe kuna mtu ambaye anatoka serikalini ni wa eneo hilo ili kwamba tunapokuwa tunafanya digestion basi tuwe tunaweza tukapata uh, pengine maelezo mazuri kutoka kwenye uh, idala yake hiyo asante Asante. Mi kwanza kabisa ni washukuru initiative kama hii. E, ni zidi tu kwa encourage kuendelea kufanya as many as possible. Sababu zina mchango mkubwa sana. Lakini pia ni shukuru na hisi nimebarikiwa kuwa na watala mbalimbali, madokta, maprofesa imekuwa na nafasi nzuri sana kwa sisi wengine kujifunza. Kikubwa nilikuwa na, na ni kama kaushauri naamini tupo ambao tuliopo hapa ni mara ya kwanza. Nilikuwa nadhani ni vyema pengine si vibaya kwa mfano kwa conference hii. Conference nayo kuja watu wakapata ta hint ya nini kilitokea kwenye conference iliyopita na labda nini kilifanikiwa pengine hata kwa implemented au kipo kwenye ngazi gani. Nafikiri ni jambo jema. Kwa nilitamani sana kujua conference iliyopita ilizungumzia nini na tumefikia wapi kwa kushirikiana na serikali na wadau wengine mbalimbali. Jumi na hapo ni shukuru tu tumezungumzia mambo ya msingi kuhusiana na curriculum role based pedagogy girls education na uh, inclusive education and so forth. Ni wakaribisha room to read tuna mifano mizuri sana ya role based pedagogy tuna mifano mizuri sana girls education lakini pia tuna mifano at least kwa sasa tuna tuna tuna, tuna, tuna kuangalia na magani naweza tuka, 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 tuka na sisi kwenye kitu kinachoitwa inclusive education ili tuungane mkono na serikali ambayo inafanya jitihada kubwa katika kuendeleza gurudumu la elimu Tanzania. Asante sana. Asante sana. Asante sana. Uh, kwa majina naitwa Mberu wa Petro na kwa maslahi ya muda na nikimbie kusema ambao nilipanga kusema tangu jana lakini sikupata nafasi. Ni swala zima la curriculum development. Sinto sema kama nilivyokuwa nimejiandaa lakini ni sema tu kauli ya ya mwisho ambao nilitamani nimalizie kusema kwamba sisi matatizo yetu hayapo kwenye uzaifu wa mitaala ama hatuna mitaala. Matatizo yetu sisi yapo kwenye uzaifu wa kutekeleza mitaala. Kwa mfano ukitizama mazingira ya ufundishaji upatikanaji wa vifaa masla ya wadau wa elimu kwa mfano walimu wanafunzi wenyewe si mazuri lakini si kwamba hatuna sela hatuna mitaala hatuna miongozo wala kanuni tunazo nzuri sheria zipo zinazowatambua watoto wa makundi yote Aa, zipo zinazoelekeza walimu wanaopaswa kufundisha Kwa utalatibu tunao kanuni tunazo lakini uzaifu katika kuzitekeleza ndio unaotufikisha hapa tulipo. Asante. Asante sana. Huyu bwana alikuwa amenyemelea, amechomekea ya kwenye specifics. Mimi nataka general. Labda kifupi tu tunaona coordinator wetu pale wakati amekaa tukiangalia kwenye ubao pale tunaona outcome statement sasa na tukiangalia kwenye ratiba ipo na tunaambiwa kinachofuata sasa hivi pengine mgeni rasmi atakuja kutufungia vipi hicho kama kinakuwa shared au taratibu wake ukoje nataka kujua hicho tu mm -hmm. asante sana coordinator anataka kusema kitu
sawa e nadhani ni, 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 ni wazo jema ni wazo jema labda ni timing tu ni wakati gani tuta maana hayo nayo tunayo yasema haya ni ya msingi kwa maana ya kuna mambo kuna gaps katika uandaji wa wa, 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 wa wa conference ambao tunataka kuziboresha next year tuweze kuna nini lakini ni lazima watu hawa waone outcome statement hiyo ni haki yetu ili tusisingiziwe kwamba sisi tuliohudhuria leo tumesema kitu fulani ambacho hatukusema ndio maana hakuwa na ile outcome statement ndio itakayo tubeba lakini pia kama mtapendezwa ni tupitishe ile zoezi haraka ili tuje kwenye statement ili mgeni lazima anapokuja aweze pia kuiona hiyo uh, statement sio mnasemaje naomba kwa hiyo watakayo kuwa anazungumza twende sio kwamba kila mtu atuzungumze tunataka utoe hizi general overview alafu then turudi kwenye statement tuliangalie tumsubiri mgeni rasmi nafikiri hapa nimemaliza upande wa huku ninahamia upande wa huku sasa wazee wa wizara kuna jambo lolote mnapenda nani kama limeudhi mseme kuna jambo fulani sisi tumeudhika sana kama kume, kuna kitu kimenogesha kimependeza mseme kuna kitu fulani kimependeza na tungependa kiendelee tunapenda kusikia vitu vya namna hiyo kwa kuhusisha wanafunzi pia katika conference kama hii kwa wakilisha zangu i'm so much inspired kukutana kuzungukwa na madaktari na maprofesa it is a lifetime inspiration so i'm so grateful also nashukuru tenement nashukuru presenters wote wa paper zote na the committee at large also i would like to urge you all to keep pressing you, are, you, are, you guys what you are doing you are not fighting for yourselves or you are not trying to make a change for today but we are trying to raise a generation a new generation a brand new generation with all that we are struggling to do so please keep pressing and tuko pamoja nanyi we'll do all that we can actually you are generating a new generation for our kids Sisi Likareto. Kwa hiyo we are so grateful and so 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 grateful. Also everything went on well. Tunashukuru sana. Asante. Asante. Na mimi pia nitumie fursa hii kuwapongeza tenement kwa kazi ambayo mnaifanya. Lakini ni seme katika sehemu hizi pengine tunashauri kwamba mna wawakilishi wengi lakini katika huo uwakilishi pia mna ushawishi je mnaonaje sasa mkaweka utaratibu wa asasi au wa wadau wa elimu mka, mkawa kitu kimoja na mkazungumza lugha moja hasa kwenye ajenda hii ya elimu nadhani asasi zote au wadau wa elimu wote wakizungumza lugha moja tunaweza tukafikia lengo tukatoka kule tuliko tukafikia hatua ya mafanikio kwa hiyo niwapongeze pia kwa mada nzuri na mambo mengine yameenda vizuri asanteni asante nami pia nashukuru sana kwa kuwa mahali hapa kwa siku hizi tatu nimejengwa sana na kila kilichozungumzwa na kuelezwa hapa nilikuwa ninaomba kushauri au ku ku nilikuwa naomba nishauri jambo moja katika pepa zote tulizosikia kuna wadau wengi walio lengwa moja kwa moja ambao tuko hapa kwa mfano walimu lakini pia tenement pamoja na na CSOs lakini kuna wadau wa msingi ambao nilitamani ningewaona pia ambao ni wanafunzi tuachane na wachuo wanafunzi wale wa shule za msingi tumewazungumza sana kwenye papers lakini nafikiri ingeleta pia 
hamasa kama na yeye angesimama akaeleza kwa kina au kwa ufupi sana yale ambayo pia anakutana nayo kama ni shida kwenye elimu yake nafikiri pia ingekuwa ni mchango mkubwa kwenye tukio kama hili kwa nilikuwa natamani wakati mwingine anapozungumzwa huyu mtoto wa shule ya msingi pia naye angekuepo akatoa mawili matatu ambayo yangeweza kuchangia kuboresha sekta hii ya elimu ingependeza zaidi asante oh, asante sana hii habari njema sana eh manake hapa tutakuwa tu na mchanganyiko wa watoto wa shule za msingi sekondari wa wenye mahitaji maalum na wasio na mahitaji maalum asante sana karibu asante sana mimi pia ni nichangie mambo mawili kwa haraka haraka jambo la kwanza au kabla sichanga nitoe pongezi kwa ushiriki wote walio shiriki pamoja na waandaji lakini pia jambo la msingi la kwanza naona kama vile tunapofanya maandalizi ya conference kama hii ni vizuri zaidi tuwe na mada tuwe na wawasilishaji mchanganyiko kwa mfano tunaposema kwamba tenement na wadau wake tumewasilisha pepa ambayo imetokana na survey tuliyofanya tukaja na issues kama hizi hapa lakini pia upande wa serikali au wizara au idara husika inayohusika kwa mfano unaposema kwamba girl child quality education for sustainable development tupate upande wa serikali watu wa sera watu wa mipango na zile mitala wao watuaje na pepa yao wanasemaje kuhusu eneo hilo na nini wanachofanya au nini ambacho serikali inaenda kufanya kama jana mdau moja people represent mkonongwa moja akasema hapo serikali tumefikia kwa fulani si ndio kwa kila kila eneo tungepata matokeo kama yale au ange present paper nyingine tukaona mpango wa serikali inatusaidia sisi kuunisha wa mambo na kuona wapi tunakwenda lakini pia presentation kutoka chini mwalimu yule wa shule ya msingi tunayesema leo kwamba anapata shida gani kuna mambo magani yanatokea utegeaje kule chini ukoje mwalimu hatuambie pepa yake kwa hiyo mwalimu anaweza kuwasilisha shule za msingi na shule za sekondari hata vile hivyo ninavyosema hakuna ufundishaji walimu wanafundishwa vibaya mtaala usemi hiki kuna changamoto kadhaa shuleni hebu tupate pepa kutoka kwenye vile vile vya ufundi wa ufundishaji watuambie hali koje ili katika conference kama hii tunajifunza hapo pia tunatoa mawazo kila mmoja aondoka na mawazo wakiwa kwenye maeneo yao ni rahisi kuboresha na kuja kitu kizuri cha mwisho Uh, si kila mtu ataweza kupata nafasi kuzungumza hivi ninavyozungumza hapa. Kwa hiyo ni vizuri tenement secretariat tukawa na evaluation form. Event kama hii au conference kama hii kila mmoja akipata form yake hataandika maoni mazuri, mambo ambayo hakupata mic kusema lakini akiandika ataandika vizuri itasaidia kukuboresha. Asante. Asante sana. Hicho ulichozungumza mwisho nafikiri tuna form ambayo imeandaliwa mtaijaza kwa yale ambayo mnadhani huwezi kuyasema hapa. Najua kuna mambo mengine watu wanasema watoto wakiwa wameenda kulala. Kwa hiyo hayo utayasema kwenye ile form. <laughs> Haya, nimalizie kwa mzee hapa. Alafu tunakwenda. Asante sana daktari. Nina ninawashukuru sana hawa tenement. Ndio mara yangu ya kwanza ninahudhuria conference yao ambayo kwa kweli imekuwa ni nzuri sana. Kuna mambo mawili ningependa niyazungumzie. La kwanza, of course that other guy was about to take words from my mouth. Ni kwamba hapa tumefanya presentation nzuri sana. Watu wame present mambo mazuri kabisa. Lakini ningeshauri conference ijayo tu tualike wale watu wa serikali kwa maana kwamba wale watu wa Tamisemi na wale watu wa Wizara wale watu wa Wizara ya Elimu waandae e, mambo yao ya sela kuhusu hiyo theme ya mwaka huu. Alafu wale watu wa Tamisemi waandae presentation ambayo angalau itatupa ile 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 ile, ile bigger picture what is happening kwa mtazamo wa serikali kwenye education sector. Hii ita ita ita, ita, ita punguza maswali mengi ambayo walikuwa wanalazimika kujibu papo kwa papo bila kuwa hata na taarifa za msingi maana huwezi kwa kalili statistics zote mpaka za kule Kigoma wapi haiwezekani. Kwa hiyo hilo lilikuwa wazo langu la kwanza. La pili uh, ukiangalia hii ratiba 
katika kila paper tano zilizowasilishwa kwenye hii conference mbili zilikuwa za eche hatukuona paper za za secondary level hatukuona paper za higher learning mimi ni mdau wa eche kwa hiyo ningeweza kusema uh, yeah that is so fine for us lakini kwa sababu tunazungumzia quality of, quality of education kama theme ya ya, 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 ya hii conference basi litakiwa angalau tuiangalie quality across subsectors hii ingeweza kutupa picha nzuri ya kuelewa kinachotokea kwenye kwenye maeneo yote tukaondoka hapa na mazimio ambayo yana uzito eh hey, hili 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 angalau mwenyekiti next time usahau kunialika asante asante sana na nafikiri next time tutajipanga kuhakikisha kwamba wote wanashiriki kwa sababu tunazungumza masuala ya quality of education mzee unataka ku... mama hujazungumza sasa tunahamia huko Asante sana. Ninashukuru kwa ufupi sana. Kwanza ni kushukuru. Mimi naitwa Lorivi Muro kutoka Joshua Foundation ambao tuko Arusha, ni taasisi ambayo ni wadau wa elimu. Lakini tunashukuru kama organization ambapo tumealikwa. Mimi mwenyewe binafsi ninaona nimejifunza mengi lakini kama organization pia. Lakini kwa haraka haraka kama kushauri ni maeneo matatu tu kwa ufupi sana. Moja ni upande wa ushawishi. Wadau wa elimu ni wengi. Na ninaona ni namna gani Tenmet kuwaunganisha pamoja. Tumefanikiwa kuleta hizi uh, CBO na SSO pamoja na kuweza kujua wanafanya nini na wako wapi. Kuna level ya watu kama Reli. Reli Tanzania ni jukwaa kubwa, very strong sasa hivi tukiweza kufika mahali wote are the common uh, uh, issues ambazo tunaweza tukaweka pamoja tunaweza tukashirikiana na wadau wengine lakini tukishaungana nini kitokee tuweze kufanya advocacy maeneo yale ambayo tunataka tu ya present kwa decision maker kwa wakati mfano wakati wa bunge na kuna issues za education zinawasilishwa ni lazima tuwe strategically how to present them sauti zetu zifike kwao na zifikie kwa umma na zifikie dunia Naweza tukatumia nguvu kubwa kuongea lakini tukiwa tumejipanga underground tukaje kutokeza pale kwa wakati mambo yetu yatatekelezeka na sio sio kwa approach ya kulaumu approach so polite hiyo ni ushauri wangu wa kwanza juu kwa hili liweza kutoa ya pili ni mambo ya uh, gharama na plans uh, eh, hapa tunajua kuna wadau wamekaa chini wakafikiria gharama zilizotuleta hapa lakini schedule schedule ya hii ingekuwa e, tunakuwa involved kwenye mwaka mwapema mwaka wa fedha wa organization au wa watu wa serikali ni possible sisi tukawa na contribution tukaiweka pale kutakuwa na mkutano quality education events tukaiweka pale kwenye budget hiyo ni another thinking ambayo naifikiria kama sustainability ya hii mkutano ambao tunaweza kufanya wa kabla ya wa national tukawa na watu wachache wa kuandaa ule mkubwa kwa ajili hiyo ni moja katika mambo ya plan lakini ya mwisho ni field activities ambapo tumeona hawa wadau hapa ukweli wewe fikiria uko wizarani wizarani au si wengine wale watu wa paperwork saa nyingine hawajui sana vitu vya kule field they are more experienced with paper issue kwenye computer uh, ICT njoo pale kwenye grassroots sisi tunaenda field tunalala tunaumwa na kunguni maisha ni tofauti implementation ni tofauti tufanye siku nne siku ya kwanza ni field tunakuja hapa costa zinatusubiri na tusifanyie dodoma maybe njoni arusha njoni joshua ni taasisi mtajifunza vitu vingi twende wawili wanaenda kwenye ICT wengine wanaenda kwenye disability hawa nakuja tukirudi hapa kutoka field tukiongea tunaongea fact kwa hiyo uwezekano wa hii wa hizi activities za mkutano huu pawepo na field activities nashukuruni sana Asante sana. Tunashukuru next year mzee tunapata contribution kutoka kwa wadau ikiwemo Joshua Foundation. Asante sana. Ila mtaarifu mapema. Asante. Mimi na vitu vile vitatu cha kwanza naitwa Laurent kutoka chama cha Wamilia Tanzania. Entertainment liweza kuunganisha wadau mbalimbali kwa maana ya ya serikali, wadau wa sekta binafsi na na nyia ambapo kimsingi mnafanya kazi kubwa ya advocacy kwanza 
uh, hizi ni reflective meetings hivyo ni vyema basi muundo wa uandaji na uratibu wake uandae wadau wote kwa maana ya watunga sera kama walivyoshauri wenzangu watekeleza sera wote wa sekta ya umma na binafsi pamoja na sisi ambao tunafanya kazi ya advocacy kila siku ili kwa pamoja tufike tukiwa na vitu tangible yaani tusifike kukaa na kusikiliza na sisi kwenye kila, kila upande unaokuja wawe na vitu vya kuleta ndani ili tenement na yenyewe pia iweze kufaidi Isi, isitoe tu na yenyewe ipokee kutoka kutoka kwa wadau wengine ni swala la um, umuhimu wa mkutano hii kwa sababu tunakuwa na annual joint education sector review ile ya serikali ni yangu mimi ili kuweza kuwa na input nzuri kisekta ni vizuri mkutano kama huu ukafanyika kabla ile mikutano mikubwa ya serikali ili uh, maazimio yanayofika ndio iwe ndio salamu ya tenement kwenye mikutano kama ile sijui this is my my thinking ili sionekana maana ukishamaliza kwenye resolution za kiutekelezaji hii mingine kuleta mabadiliko sana this is my advice kwa sababu otherwise kitu kama hiki mwaka huu unakuta theme ya zinakinzana watu wa serikali wataweza kutekeleza sana haya ambayo lakini tukiyaweka kabla tuka inline na yale tutakwenda vizuri zaidi fikiri kwa muda mrefu nikizungumza na CSOs nyingi na NGOs zina kazi na watu wa private sector nyie matajiri kidogo hiyo notion ni na shida kidogo naomba nitoe rai kwenu focus ya CSOs au NGOs ni ku improve student learning outcome. Yaani mnamlenga mtoto. Sasa mkianza kufikiria mtoto huyu anasoma kule na wapi, hata vile vya msingi ambavyo kwenye shule za binafsi hazipatikani, na watavikosa kila siku. Kwa focus yenu wewe ni mtoto au mwalimu. Hapo hata mkiandaa training mtakumbuka private. Na we are ready to contribute. We are, we are always saying that. Yaani mkipanga training packages, si lazima mkatubure kikishe na tutagerimia wenyewe lakini ushirikishwaji ni jambo la msingi kwa sababu dhamira ya mwisho yenu wote ni kuboresha sekta ya elimu nchini Asante sana bwana Nafikiri haya mambo ya timing haya eh ni lazima tuyazingatie wazee hapa wanaweza kutaka kuwind up karibisha ni wazee wa kutoka uzarani lazima mna neno la kubariki mahali hapa habari za mchana. Ah, mimi kwa kweli nilikuwa hapa kwa, kwa ajili ya kujifunza zaidi. Nimejifunza mambo mengi sana ambayo mengi yako kwenye ground route. Wanajua sisi watu wa kwenye sera huko wakati mwingine mambo ambayo yanatokea really katika situation down down the tree kule sio rahisi kuyaona au kuyasikia. Kwa kweli ni mfara ambayo imenikutanisha maana nikafahamu vitu vingi sana, vitu vingi especially Uh, and lucky mimi siko kwenye basic education zaidi niko kwenye mambo ya tvet lakini i learned quite a lot of things about basic education kwa kweli ilikuwa ni fora na mambo ni nzuri na ninaomba iwe sio 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 tu kwamba yale ambayo umeamua hapa kwa upande wa kwetu tutayachukua na nyie yale ambayo mnayofanya mnafanya ni more practical ili haya mambo yasishie tu kwenye self yaendelee kuwa kama thamani kubwa kwa taifa asante sana Bana mkubwa. Ya. Ni, ni, ni labda niongane ni na mwanzangu alivyosema. Eh, kwa sehemu kubwa sana ni, ni swala la kujifunza. Kwamba kitu gani ambacho wenzetu wa mtandao wa elim fanya na tumepata mambo mengi sana. Na sina shaka kwamba haya yamekuwa yamebuka hapa kupitia tafiti presentation sina shaka tafiti tibu sahihi kwa serikali ili tuone ni jinsi gani ambavyo tunaweza tukakop tuka na maazimio ambayo atakuwa amefanyika hapa otherwise same sana tuko tunajifunza kitu gani ambacho mmekifanya na mnalenga kufanya kitu gani kuboresha elimu Tanzania Otherwise ni washukuru sana. Asante sana. Tunashukuru sana kwa sababu uh, watu wakizungumza ndio inakuwa uh, inaleta raha. Wazee wa ile ya kule nyuma sijui
mawazo ya kuya jumla jumla hata kushukuru tu <laughs> Asante kwa kutuona. Uh, uh, sisi tuli, tulijitenga kidogo tukawa tunaangalia ustawi wa jamii lakini mawili matatu tulikuwa tunayapata. To mimi nikiwa kama sehemu ya tenement secretariat ninaona kazi kubwa ambayo iko mbele yetu kwa ajili ya kweki ya mwaka ujao. Kwa hiyo yote tutayachukua na mengine tayari yalikuwa yameshazunguka kwenye vichwa vyetu wakati tunazunguka kwenye corridor tulikuwa tunajaribu kujevaluate wakati tangu siku ya kwanza ya pili leo siku ya tatu tulikuwa tujakaa kama kamati tulikuwa tunaangalia na uzuri sasa wadau wenyewe mmeyasema kwa hiyo tumeya document na tukitoka hapa kamati tutakaa lakini baada ya hapo pia Januari kamati tunaanza kazi ya kuandaa kweki ya mwaka ujao kwa hiyo yote tutayazingatia na kweki ya yao itakuwa itakuwa nzuri zaidi Mungu akitupa uhai. Asante mwenyekiti. Tunashukuru. Uh, nafikiri unajua hii ni nzuri kuliko ile ya kujaza tu kwenye kwenye form. Kwa sababu haya aliyozungumza ungeambia andike ulitakumnunulia daftari kabisa ile account book. Mimi kwa niaba ya kamati ya maandalizi ya huu mkutano ninawashukuru sana. Ninawashukuru sana kwa sababu ya uvumilivu wenu. Ninawashukuru sana kwa sababu ya michango mbalimbali mliotoa. Na tunaamini kwamba haya maoni mliotoa hapa mwishoni yatatusaidia kuandaa mkutano bora zaidi mwakani. Ni kweli tumekuwa na gap, tulialika wageni wengi, lakini nafikiri wengine imegongana na mikutano mingine huko. Kwa hiyo imekuwa ni bahati mbaya, lakini tunashukuru mambo yameenda vizuri na yale mapungufu yaliyojitokeza tutajitahidi kweki ijayo iwe ni mimi ni mwenyekiti au mtu mwingine basi tutajaribu kuzingatia na kuhakikisha kwamba mkutano wetu wa quality education unakuwa ni mkutano wa kitaifa na sio tu wa watu wachache tunataka tuwe na wawakilishi wa kutoka katika kila sekta na tungependa kama alivyo shauri wadau wa, wa kwamba tuwe na papers kutoka upande wa serikali kutoka upande wa wadau mbalimbali wa watendaji wa, 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 wa kwenye mashule kwenye vyuo ili angalau tupate ile picha halisi eh, kwamba nini kinaendelea huko tusije tukaonekana kwamba wakati fulani ni kama vile tunapingana hapa sisi hatutaki kugombania fito kwa sababu nyumba tunayojenga ni moja baada hapo nafikiri mkaribishe uh, coordinator aseme kama ana neno lolote la shukurani au nini kabla hajaingia kwenye outcome statement kuna mtu ambaye anafikiri kwamba yani kuna kio yetu hayajasikia mwaka huu na macho yetu hayajaona mwaka huu. Yatakuwa ni mambo mazuri sana. Na mikutano kama hii kama wizara itaweza kuja na watu wake wenye papers kwa ajili ya kuklarify baadhi ya vitu juu ya mada hizo hizo ambazo ziko kwenye papers itatusaidia sana kuweza kufanya yani kutengeneza sera kwa pamoja sasa. Tunakwenda kwa pamoja. Eh? na tukifika hapo inakuwa inaleta uh, hamasa ya watu kujua kwamba kumbe kuna kitu fulani kinaendelea wenzangu na sasa tunaomba na wewe utupe neno lolote la la ku, sio kufunga ila tu la ku tuambia nini unatuambia kuhusu conference ijayo na alafu ndio uingie kwenye statement ambayo ni ya matokeo Asante sana mwenyekiti uh, good afternoon Jamani yule wa energizer leo amezuba sana sijui kwa nini. Hatujamkaribisha. Eh? Lakini yote mema. Ah ni sema kwamba nitangulie kwa, kwa kusema kwamba na washukuruni nyote. Hii kazi ilikuwa ni ngumu ya miezi karibia minne. Kwanza kutafuta au presenters ilikuwa kazi. Lakini pia msome magazeti 
kwa sababu proposal na abstract tuliandika kwenye magazeti nchi nzima magazeti yanafika lakini <coughs> kuna baadhi wali respond kama presenters wetu wa sasa hivi lakini next year tutafanya the same thing kwa hiyo ni waalike wote wote ambao mngependa kufanya presentation next year tutawapa taarifa kwa email zenu lakini pia tutawapa taarifa kwa njia ya website lakini pia tutawapa taarifa kwa njia ya magazeti ili tuweze kufanya maandalizi mapema lakini la pili kitu ambacho tutafanya pia cha tofauti kidogo CO2 presentations za paper lakini pia tutakuwa na panel discussion ili tupate ile real time discussion na watu wanaohusika na maeneo tofauti tofauti kwa hiyo tuka ku identified kuwepo kwenye panel discussion pia ni encourage kwamba uweze ku provide time kwa ajili ya hilo lakini kingine ambacho tuna changamoto ni kwa wale wote tunaoweza kuchangia gharama za uendeshaji wa shughuli hii so far tulipata wawili lakini ninaungana na Joshua na wengine ninajua mnakwenda kufanya annual budget wengine mtafanya Januari wengine mmekusha kufanya basi weka ka portion kidogo ambacho kinaweza kikatusaidia kuendeleza quality conference each year huu ni mwaka wa moja na ningeomba tujipigie makofi na gharama hizi sio ndogo kwa sababu tuitajia tuwe na watu mia moja kwenye conference hii lakini nadhani we are hardly 60 or 50 around there lakini mwaka kesho tutahakikisha kwamba tunatangaza mapema na tunaifanya mapema kama mlivyoweza kutoa ushauri. Mwezi wa 12 pia tumeona sio muda mzuri wa kufanya quality education conference. Na mimi ni mara yangu ya kwanza ninahudhuria sio kwamba kwenye hizo 11 nilikuwepo lakini ya 11 ndio nimekuwepo. Kumi zingine zote zimefanyika between November to December. Lakini between November to December sio muda mzuri sana. Kwa hiyo tutawataarifu mapema either ni June au July around that time nadhani itakuwa ni the best time tunasemaje yeah kwa sababu wengi ambao tumewakosa safari tumewakosa kwa sababu wako likizo wamesafiri wamefunga ofisi na wana commitment zingine ambazo wameshindwa kuhudhuria mkutano huu otherwise niwashukuru nimefurahi kwenye hizo presentation lakini at secretariat level nimejifunza mambo mengi kwa sababu sisi kama secretariat kazi yetu ni kukusanya information. Na tunapopata hizi information tunazisaikulate. Kwa hiyo hizi information zote ndio maana tuna specialist katika kila idara wako media wamefanya kazi kubwa sana. Kama ungekuwa unge, unge unaangalia TV kwa siku hizi mbili tatu matangazo haya yote yamekuwa kwenye TV, kwenye magazeti, kwenye social media kwa hiyo niweze kuwapongeza kwa kazi nzuri. Lakini pia niwapongeze secretariat. Wengine wa kweli ilifikia hatua tunataka kushikana mashati. Kwa sababu labda paper fulani haijafika, kitu fulani hakijafanyika, bookings za hoteli hazijafanyika, invitation and so on and so forth. Kwa hiyo niwapongeze wafanyakazi wenzangu kwa kazi nzuri na kwa kujituma kuhakikisha kwamba kwa sababu tuliyairisha mwanzoni ilikuwa tufanye tarehe mbili hadi tarehe nne lakini circumstances hazikuruhusu ndio maana tukaenda tarehe moja mpaka tarehe tatu. otherwise yangu ni machache labda tuende sasa kwenye draft how to come statement asanteni sana
lenzi kwa bado na E outcome statement I'm just going to read what has been drafted by the technical team lakini in light of the discussion in light of contribution in light of the theme kwa hiyo kwa yale ambayo tunakubaliana kwa pamoja tutakubaliana yale ambayo mnasema tuyaboreshe tutayaboresha yale ambayo mnasema this is exactly not we think it should be bas pia mtanyosha mkono tutaweza kuyajadili lakini next time tutazisaikulate mapema a day before at least ili kila mtu aweze kupitia mapema na kuweza kutoa input Nicholas Um zoom kidogo Hali kwenye lens niligusa hapo kwenye lens Iwe sharp a little bit sharp sabu ntasoma from that end yanaonekana as far as kule nyuma sio sana eh? let me try to zoom again and we see what we can see together That's the best I can project. Naweza nikaendelea kusoma. the title in a same how to come statement the 11th annual quality educational conference. The theme is quality education my right. We the stakeholders of the 11th annual quality educational conference abbreviated as QEC organized by Tanzania Educational Network are gathered at Morena Hotel in Dodoma from 11th to 13th December 2019 to discuss the educational theme quality education my right revisiting the global action week of education gawe 19 theme this year quake has cemented into similar theme for the purpose of emphasis and reaffirm, reaffirming its re relevance the thematic agenda in 2019 conference are well aligned to our commitment to the united nations 2030 agenda for sustainable development in particular SDG 4 and its recognition of education as a fundamental human right public good and a state responsibility acknowledging the need and urgency of providing quality equitable and inclusive education for all from early childhood care through hard at learning pathways including tertiary education and lifelong learning the annual quality educational conference in december 2019 focused on four thematic agenda namely teaching and learning environment in tanzania inclusive education girls education 
and early childhood development. This agenda, to a great extent, are results of education stakeholders, <coughs> areas of focus including tenement strategic priorities, the Tanzania Education and Training Policy 2014, and commitment towards achieving education 2030 agenda <coughs> as prescribed in SDG 4 specifically on promise to deliver inclusive and equitable quality education and the lifelong learning opportunities for all. On current trends, 220 million children and youth will still be excluded from school in 2030. Asante <coughs> And one in three young people will not complete secondary education. Despite progress, many countries are failing to eliminate enduring multiple forms of discrimination in and through education and still far from achieving gender equality at all levels of education. Despite the fact that the government has clearly shown a sense of political will in the areas of educational financing, development of educational policies, and the relevant strategic programs, in practice, the sector continues being engulfed by insufficient financing to address sufficiently inclusive education at all levels. Challenges facing girls, child toward acquiring quality education, development and harmonization of curriculum, and improving teaching and learning environment. To a great extent, early childhood education and the development and inclusive education are a few amongst many areas that continue to have a wide gap, including limited number of qualified, qualified teachers, teaching environment, which in that, which in does upon on a grammatical United Nations General Assembly, SDG Summit, that called for a bolder policy focus on inclusion as an imperative to ensure the realization of a world where all children, youth, and adults are empowered with the relevant knowledge and the skills to shape more resilient, inclusive, and sustainable societies. Adversely, Tanzania continues to have many children with disabilities out of school with a limited number of inclusive education, currently considered, considered to be 601 out of 16,149 pre- and primary schools. If reflected alongside with available statistics, that shows that shows with 10,111,671 million pupils enrolled in primary in 2018, out of which 49,625, which is zero point, I don't think that percent is correct, eh? 0 0.5 of the total enrollment are children with disability. While many studies commend to have still thousands of children with disabilities being out of school, we stakeholders find that Tanzania require, requires more inclusive schools that are well resourced with assistive devices, 
teaching and learning materials, qualified teachers in special needs, in special needs education, and curriculum that take into account inclusive setting. All these are to a great extent lacking and it requires being amongst top educational priorities in the country. While we stakeholders celebrate reforms in Marriage Act in Tanzania in favor of girl child, we feel standing out once more to point out that statistics on teen pregnancy involving school girls are so alarming and astonishing. Statistics with an average of hundreds per districts and thousands per region. Existing learning environment continue to be a cause for exclusion of a girl child from benefiting from basic education, especially where there is law enforcement of laws for the perpetrators of sexual violence. Home to school distance and lack of dormitories in most community. Secondary schools have to a great extent been a cause for continued girls' vulnerability and increased teen pregnancies involving school girls. We the stakeholders recommend that Addressing challenges facing girls' child towards acquiring quality education requires thoughtful consideration on ensuring girls' child education becomes one of the top educational sector priorities. And the performance indicators reflect achievement beyond access. National statistics Show, shows that there are more girls than boys who attend schools, but this has not been a reality in a past rate. The output, unlike access, continues to exclude more girls compares to boy, compared to boys, and this goes further to higher learning institutions. Similarly, Government policies should give systematic priority to systemic priority to vulnerable and marginalized groups in ensuring that they have access to quality education, access to school environment that are safe and free from discrimination, and that foster lifelong learning opportunities. We share the broader definition of inclusion as a transformative process that ensures access to and participation in quality learning opportunities for all children, young people, and adults, respecting and valuing diversity, and eliminating all forms of discrimination in and throughout the educational cycle. We express our deep concern about the growth in education privatization and the commercialization and the persistent violation of the right to 12 years of free education. We urge that public education systems to be strengthened to uphold the right to education and the donor support must be channeled to this end. Furthermore, all private provision must be, must be well regulated and be aligned with human right, rights principles. Drawing on the tenement commitment, we agree on key conditions and actions to strengthen inclusion at all levels of education, in particular, advocate for legal policy and planning frameworks that adopts an inclusive right-based approach. Develop curricula and pedagogical practices that respect cultural and linguistic diversity, promote human rights, global citizenship, and gender equality. Ensure that teachers are adequately trained, recognized, remunerated, and supported to promote a culture 
and the practice of inclusion, which goes beyond the schools and which enhances their relation with the surrounding community. Teachers' autonomy in handling flexible curricula and in developing critical thinking in their students must be guaranteed. Improve the collection and availability of disaggregated data to inform action, monitoring, and the, and the assurance of accountability. Build self-inclusive learning environments free of harassment, violence, and discrimination, and support mechanisms that offer access to services and information for those affected. Strengthen partnership between educational stakeholders, other social, social sectors, and the broader community to promote inclusion and equity. We urgently reaffirm that acknowledging education as a fundamental human right implies and requires increased financing. According we call on government to the agreed education for education of GDP and 15% to 20 of public expenditure towards education, including through national and global tax justice mechanisms. To bridge the financial national product to aid and allocate 10% of that to education. Acknowledging the status of the duty bear bearer, we call for strengthening the critical role of the civil society in ensuring the right to education for all. This includes setting in place institutionalized mechanism for meaningful civil society particip participation at national, regional, and international levels, leveraging collective dialogue and action. We further call for protecting and advancing the right to full participation of students, youths, teachers, communities, and civil society organizations <clears throat> in policy making and monitoring, with particular attention to involving marginalized groups. We acknowledge that this quality educational conference is a key mechanism for increased information sharing, capacity building, and collaboration amongst stakeholders in the pursuit of SDG4. We call on our stakeholders and partners to ensure that tenement conferences are strengthened to enable them to play a central role in leadership and coordination of SDG4. This must include continuing to recognize civil society as a fully fledged partner in debates and decisions in the implementation of SDG4 Education 2030. We finally thank CEDA Pestalozzi Children's Foundation and other education stakeholders for their support in terms of resources and organization of this 11th annual quality educational conference from 11th to 13th December 2019. I beg to submit. Kim Singh, this is the draft statement. Now, it has been put together na technical team, na wako hapa, ambao wame provide some input, lakini we still have a leverage of time for all of us together to see where any place ambao wame noti, panaitaji improvement, panaitaji kuboresha, panaitaji kuondolewa all together we can now start getting your inputs 
kama na kama kuna maeneo ambayo tukubaliane nayo basi pia tunaweza tukaya nani au kama kuna eneo ambalo tume discuss na tume atuku include kwenye hiyo statement can i now start getting hizo points ili technical committee walio draft hii waweze kuchukua ili mgeni rasmi anapokuja basi tutaisoma tena kama ilivyo eh, ilivyo kuwa improved yes any additional contribution yes sir I think this, in, in general, I think it's, a, it's an excellent uh, reflection of what transpired during our discussions. But uh, I've noticed there are a few or a couple of uh, corrections that need to be made. For example, we know our name is TENMET. TENMET is an, an acronym. But, but it's given as... Uh, Tanzania Educational Network, TENMED, no. Mutandawa Tanzania, Elim, Tanzania Education Network, Mutandawa Elim Tanzania, and the acronym is TENMED, that we are used to. And I've noted there are a number of a few grammatical glitches which need to be rectified, I think. But as a whole, as I said, it's an excellent report of what we discussed. That's all. Asante, asante mwenyekiti. Nilikuwa na mtizamo kidogo tofauti kwenye au ku, namna kuboresha mtizamo wa, wa, wa hoja ya tenement. Kuna mali tumezungumzia namna ya ku ya kuhakikisha kwamba access to education ichukuliwe kama ni haki ya mtoto na hivyo kuangalia namna ya ku serikali kuweza ku regulate private sector ili si jeopardize hiyo haki ya mtoto kupata elimu. Sasa awezo for view kwamba hoja hapo ni uh, hoja ni kwamba education is a regulated service iwe ni ya uma au au ni ya private they are all regulated sectors private and government sasa nafikiri hoja kubwa ambayo ni changamoto huwa tuiangalie vizuri ni financing system public schools is, is same kubwa na kuwa finance na government lakini private Education is funded by parents. Na hawa owners hawana alternative source isipokuwa nini ni wazazi walipe ada. Kwa hiyo hoja ni namna ya kujenga hoja. Namna gani kama wadau tunajaribu ku advocate for alternative models of financing in education. Hiyo ndio hoja. Kwamba lazima tufike mahali kama taifa tusione kwamba mzazi pekee anaweza kafika mahali akachangia. Eh, na kumbuka tulifanya kikao na watu wa World Bank tulizungumza tukasema kuna vitu kama kitabu kwa mfano ambayo mzazi lazima anunue lakini kuna wadau huwa wanatoa kabisa gharama za vitabu kwa kwa watoto school age children wanafahamika naweza wakapewa vitabu kwa hiyo kuna baadhi ya gharama zikipunguzwa punguzwa kwa wazazi inaweza kaanza kupunguza gharama ambazo indirectly zinamgusa mtoto au kukatafutwa mechanism za ku advocate kwa kupunguza kodi sekta ya elimu ina kodi zaidi ya 16 na hatuzijui sana zile kodi zingepunguzwa kwa hiyo vyote vile mlaji naye angefanya ni ingepunguza fi hiyo ni perception yangu kwa hiyo to reframe tupate dhana kwamba tuwe na thinking ya kuwa na alternative models za financing katika mfumo wetu wa elimu asante sana kuna okay Thank you very much. Generally, it reflects of what we uh, we did here and what we um, agreed. It is really a reflection of, of what transpired. Uh, I would say uh, the only place that I, I I think we need to highlight more is the uh, the area of uh, vocational inclusive vocational uh, training. I think that that has not come out uh, uh, clearly and that is an important area now uh, when we are going to towards um, uh, middle uh, income industrial economy because that will that will help 
uh, in the inclusivity of the community and, and uh, giving more opportunity to people with special needs, I think we need to really highlight that and that should be our niche for, for this um, uh, conference this year. Thank you very much. Uh... In, in vocational education. Uh huh. Uh huh. Munyekiti, uh, we had time to come up with key issues when we, we started our conference. Yesterday, we did the same. Today, I think we didn't have enough opportunity to chat a way forward regarding the use of ICT in our schools. But listening to different people, I think we are saying government is, it, regulations or rules should not be too restrictive, uh, especially when it comes to the use of mobile phones. You actually, point, you actually put it very well that there are some applications that uh, seem uh, not to be useful, could be blocked. But all these other good applications could be used. So we are saying the government should change its policy to allow the use of technology, example, mobile phones, and have applications that can, can, can facilitate learning instead of hinder, hindering learning. And it is possible uh, we can just uh, talk to these uh, mobile phone companies. We want this kind of, and they could be brought here, and people are buying every now and then. So if you work, for example, with experts like uh, Shule Direct, they could, also, they could also help in terms of how this can work well. And it will actually solve the problem of uh, inadequacy of teachers, where we have fewer teachers, but if you have mobile phones, you can reach, if you use technology, you can reach more students, especially in secondary schools. So I think that, uh, we, we need to make that kind of, a, I think, of a statement. Asante sana. Fikiri, mzee, anataka hiyo iwepo kwenye. Asante. Mm. Yeah, sawa, sawa. Yamani, kuna, aha. Eh. <coughs> Samahani inawezekana mimi sikupata vizuri lakini kuna swala la maslahi ya walimu naona sijui kama tuligusa hapa Sina hakika kama lipo eh Okay okay basi nilikuwa bahati mbaya labda sikulipata asante Asante sana Jamani hapo ndio tunatengeneza mkeka hapo Kwa kama kuna jambo mmeliona ya tokea basi ni vizuri kulisema kabla halijasoma kwa muheshimiwa ketie mahali pa juu palipo inuka sana thank you very much i i love the way it is uh, labda kidogo amku pata labda concept ya life skill education ili weze ku kuwasaidia vijana wetu yani instead of just focusing on au oh. mshaweka Asante sana. Aha. Sawa. Lakini sijui ile swala la kila somo liwe na walimu. Tumelisema eh. Masomo kama ya civic education hayana walimu haya. Masomo kama ya vocational skills. Sijui tumeliweka wapi hilo. Mm. Mm. Yes. Practice of inclusion, which goes beyond the schools and which enhances their relation with the surrounding community. Mm -hmm. Teachers' autonomy in handling flexible curricula and in developing critical thinking in their students must be guaranteed. Sawa, sawa. Na tulisema luga ya alama ifundisho kwa watoto wote bila kujali ana, ana changamoto au hana changamoto. Sijiu kama Luga ya alama na dhani hata serikali ya unajua Kuna harmonized version Iko kwenye process 
Aha. Ya hizi lugha. Okay. Sawa. Je, kulifanya somo la civics na lenyewe litengeneze subject combination inayoweza kuwafanya sasa baadaye tuje tuwapate wataalamu wa civic education nalo tunaweza tukalichomeka hapo? Actually wewe unaongeza nasema hakuna combination na ICT A level. Na hiyo nafikiri inaweza kuwa challenge. But that is not what I wanted to say. Actually he has been teasing me here and uh, from his teasing I have, I have uh, come up with a point on how we can finance our education. We have we have created a road fund and roads are constructed all over the place. Sindio ivo. So why why don't you create for example an education fund? to can solve all these problems. Tuna umeme vijijini rea. Si tume create too. So we can create an education fund as a country. Umekunywa bia inatoka asilimia moja ya bia inaenda kwenye shule. Umenunua vocha asilimia moja inaenda. Umenunua whatever asilimia hata kama ni asilimia ngapi. We can still create as ni tunaweza tuka create education fund. Tukisema tutegemea tu code code haitaweza kutosha lakini lazima tu yeah, to me, alternative models, like in a town funnel. Alternative model, come out to create road fund, now Barabara to Nazijenga, come out Umeme Rea Unaenda, to create education fund, Pia to Naveza to Kaboresha, Elimuyetu Badala Yaku, Kutafuta Vianzo Vingin, Vianzo do Hivo. Yes, because I'm Chungucheto and Hicho Lazima to to your cake, Lazima, you as a commit Kilam Halas, of course, to prioritize. Why you women are Fakiri, since Wazazi Hawachangi, Sasa Hivi. Na kuna pego kubwa sana la financing baada ya kutoleo ile ada. Kwa hiyo, na ile gap imebaki pale. Wazazi walipo kuna changia bado kulikuwa na deficit. Sasa, umeondoa ile, da ile, bado imeongeza deficit. Kwa hiyo, to create an education fund. Education fund to create, to solve nani matatizo mengi sana. Hata walimu walioko mitaani wanaza kapata ajira, I hope. Sante sana. Naona mambo mazuri hayo. Eh? Asante sana. Ndugu yangu amenikumbusha habari ya Education Fund. Uh, makampuni ya simu huwa yanatoa gawio kama kama unarudishiwa labda 1500, 1500,2000 baada ya kuwa umeweka vocha kila baada ya muda. Nafikiri ingeza kuwa nayo ni nzuri sana ikaenda kule. Sababu ile tumetumia simu nikipewa 1000 2000 kwanza tabu wa sioni. Sasa ile zikikusanywa kwa watu wanaotumia simu kama ni milioni tatu. hizo 1000 moja ambazo zinarudi kama kama unaambiwa vada anakuambia zawadi. Zikiwa zinaenda kule nafikiri zingewaza na impact kwa sababu zingewaza zimekusanyika sana. Asante. Asante sana. Financing. Nafikiri mawazo ni mazuri sana hayo. Tuyapenyeze hapo tuone namna yanavyoweza kufika huko uh, juu na kuweza kuweka mambo sawa. Wenzetu wametushauri kwamba hii statement sasa. Kwa sababu sasa hivi tuna tuko katika pia uh, hamasa ya kutumia Kiswahili kama lugha ya taifa. Tuiweke hiyo pia kwenye Kiswahili version. Ili wale ambao wako happy na Kiswahili waweze kuipata kwa Kiswahili na wale ambao wako comfortable na Kiingereza waipate kwa Kiingereza. Ndani mpaka hapo uh, coordinator Nafiki tuko vizuri. Eh. Yes, ile timu sasa ambayo wame nani, basi watu weke mambo sawa. Suji kama lunch, tutapata lunch kabla ya mgeni rasmi, au mgeni rasmi, baka mkua meza afika. Lewa hakuna lunch. Halo, secretariat. Halo, hili ya tulekua. <laughs> anyway, lakini uh, all in all tunashukuru kwamba tuna mambo mengi mazuri na nafikiri mambo mengine kwetu yanaibuka kama mada za mwakani pia kwa mfano haya masuala ya financing in education kama kutakuwepo na issue watu watoke kabisa na pepa na nini waende hata kwenye mashirika mbalimbali yanayoweza kuchangia uh, mfuko wa elimu of course we know kuna tear 
tear ipo ina, inafanya hiyo kazi lakini si vibaya na si dhambi kupata pia other alternative ways of bringing money into education lakini pia tuna tuna tunashukuru kwamba uh, kuna mashirika tayari yanafanya kazi za ku anza kujibu maswali kama haya maswala ya ICT kwa watoto wenye ulemavu na vitu vya namna hiyo tayari watu wanafanya hizo kazi kuhusu hili lugha ya alama nafikiri hili kama alivyoeleza coordinator kwamba bado kuna jambo linafanyika la kitaifa kwa harmonize e, kuna vernacular pia kwenye lugha ya alama sasa ili kuweza kuwa na e, kind of agreed language ambayo iko nani ili alama hizo zikazifundisha ziwe wewe ukikutana na kiziwi kule Kilimanjaro na wewe ulisomea lugha ya alama njombe basi muweze kuelewana si katokea wewe unakuja na vernacular ya sign language kutoka njombe ambayo wa Kilimanjaro hawezi kukuelewa kwa hiyo hiyo wanajaribu ku harmonize ili angalau kuweze kuwa na aina moja ya nani baada ya kusema hayo nadhani eh aha kama una kitu cha kusema ambacho nadhani huyu mzee kwa sababu anatoka kule uh, anawakilisha kundi kubwa sana A, na, na, na vitu viwili kimoja tu nilikuwa na share na 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 nani hapa kwamba tayari tuna education fund ambayo umesema ni ile tea lakini hoja yetu ni kwamba tea inategemea sana contribution ambayo serikali inapeleka na mtu anayejisikia kupeleka tunachozungumzia hapa ni kwamba kama tumeweka sheria ndogo ndogo kwamba mtu akinua umeme analipi anacha, anaongele, anaongeza na mfuko kuboresha rea upatikanaji wa umeme wengine you can do similar thing kwenye ba, kwenye sekta ya elimu kwamba tea baada ya kusubiri, baada ya kusubiria serikali ipeleke kuna wakati ipeleki yao inapeleka kidogo sababu kumbuka ile mfuko pia unakopesha zaidi private sector kwa sababu kuna interest kimsingi unakopesha zaidi private sector kuliko pengine kuliko kuimarisha sekta ya umma yenyewe kwa sababu kule kuna interest ukiwa okay, mtu wa umma kwenda kukopa huwezi kurudisha lakini watu wa private kikopa wanapata interest na wana na tunatumia huo mfuko hoja yangu namna ya kuboresha kupitia eh, kupitia hiyo tunachozungumza kwamba mtu akinua anunue bia anunue anunue kitu chochote kwa na education fund kidogo ambayo anakwenda tea kule ambayo tunazungumza lakini la pili kwenye swala la infrastructure kama kama mmekuwa mkiangalia kwenye youtube the last 3 4 month wakati Kenya wana walifanya mkutano mkubwa wa maboresho ya elimu kwao walimwalika waziri wa elimu toka Ghana alikuwa anatoa testimony namna gani wao wameondokana wame, wame na changamoto ya infrastructure walipiga budget ya kuboresha infrastructure kwa sasa kwa elimu ya awali msingi na sekondari kwenye nchi yao na wakaangalia projections za budget hiyo kwa miaka kumi wakaenda kutafuta fund kwenda kukopa mahali in lamsam kumbuka hapa sasa tuzungumzi madarasa haya tunaojenga siku hizi kwamba unajenga baada ya siku kumi ameanza kuweka crack tunazungumza infrastructure kama zile shule ambazo za seminari zimejengwa miaka 30 hadi leo unaziona kwa hiyo wame, wame, walifanya hiyo kind of budgeting wakachukua lamsam ya kuboresha infrastructure yao na kila mwaka budget ya wizara ya elimu inavyopangwa sehemu ya infrastructure kazi yake ni kulipa lile deni kidogo kidogo so th these are different alternatives kwa sababu tumezungumza sana changamoto ya miundo mbinu na haiishi sisemi kwamba tukifanya hivyo tutamaliza lakini kiwango fulani tutaacha kuzungumza changamoto ya miundo mbinu labda kwa miaka kama mitano kumi. kazi yetu kwa nafanya rehabilitation zaidi kwa hiyo tujifunze kutoka kwenye practice za wenzetu nini wanafanya kwenye kuboresha miundo mbinu yao asante sana nafikiri nimependa sana hilo wazo na pia ni vizuri unapofanya vitu vyako uangalie na wenzako wengine wanafanya nini. Eh, unachukua mambo mazuri ya kutoka sehemu nyingine, unayaingiza, ukiona yanafiti kwenye system yako unatekeleza. Ukiona hayafiti unayaacha. Lakini ni muhimu sana kwa kweli kama anavyoeleza uh, bwana Gama kwamba tusipoweza kuwa na utaratibu. Nakumbuka kuna conference iliyopita au ile nyingine ya nyuma kama sio ya tisa au ya nane, tulizungumza masuala ya tax for education kwamba ni lazima to strengthen yani moja ya kazi ya tenement ni kusistiza watu walipe kodi na waone value ya kodi kwenye swala la elimu tusipotoa kodi hatuwezi kupata elimu bora ni lazima ile tukubali kwa hiyo ni lazima watu wahamasishwe kuona kwamba kulipa kwao kodi ndio elimu bora kwa watoto wao na kukwepa kodi ni kukwepa 
ili mbona kwa mtoto wako na sasa hivi tunaona yanakuja mambo ya, ya bima za afya na nini kwa hiyo wazazi sasa wanaanza kuwa na, na, na majukumu mbalimbali katika swala la financing kwa ni muhimu sana tukaibuka na alternative ways of financing our education system kwa hiyo nadhani um, Mzee tunaomba utupe warm up. Yes. kisha warm up watu wana wanaweza wakawa wamepata njaa sasa. Tusimame wote tuje nyuma huko. Naomba Dr. Sankonongo kae upande huu na mheshimiwa kutoka kae upande huu hapa. Okay. Naomba wanaotaka kwenda kwa Mkonongo, Mkonongo amfuate. Na wanaotaka kuja kwa mheshimiwa hapa. Okay, wanaotaka kuja kwa Julius waje upande wafu apange mstari mmoja hapa. Na huko mtapanga mstari mmoja. Twende chap chap tuanzie kule hamna ubaya. Twende chap chap. Nataka mstari mmoja vile nyoka hivi afu tunatazamana tusogee mbele kidogo hapo tusogee mbele kidogo hapo eh safi sana sasa tuangalie huku sasa mstari hivyo hivyo tuangalie huku eh mstari ulio nyoka hivyo hivyo okay mimi nitakuwa nenda ku kuongea kitu fulani afu nyinyi mtakuwa mnafata Tumeloana ila tunashindana Kwa kuna kundi hapa la Mr. Julius na kundi la Mkonongo Tuangalia yu kina nani wajanja Sijini meleka eh Kwa nita kuna toyo statement Nini mtakuwa mnafanya Kwa mfano Nika sema hivi uh, Tujipange kulingana na urefu wetu Yani wafupi mbele Walefu nyuma Chap chap mjipange wenyewe Nasema mfano Nasema mfano Sio matusi ni maumbile tu Natua, natua mfano Tumeloana Iyo ilikuwa ni demo Kwa tufanya laka laka Iyo tuwezo kushinda Nimeleka eh Nimeleka Ok Naanza kutua statement sasa Tujipange kulingana na umri wetu Wakubwa Wadogo mbele Wazee nyuma Kumbukeni tunashindana, tunashindana hapa. Tukianza kuangalia hapa ni kweli mnasema mko tayari. <laughs> Dickson yuko nyuma kule mzee yule. <laughs> Okay, chap chap, tujipage kulingana na kimo chetu, wafupi mbele walefu nyuma. Kiasa kwa angalia huku atilisi wa mjitai Eh, bado naendelea Huku nuna mkononga <laughs> Ok, safu sana, likuwa ataka tushindane Lakini, naona bado mda Tukitoka hii, tumalizia hii, nejaiza amusha of tukale, sindio? Ok Nam? Sijasia? Iti banana Iti Ah, uh, ngoja tuimbe nyingine ukiacha okay, hii banana iko common sana. Okay, tutazamane pia tutakuwa tunashindana. Tutazamane hivyo hivyo. Okay, leo tunaimba kidogo tu sio sana. Itakuwa ya mwisho. Msibanane sana hapo wazee. Uh, kuna maneno nikisema wide deep deep inaeleweka si ndio? Nataja ya maneno deep and wide, yani deep and wide. Inaeleweka? Alafu kuna there is a river flowing. Hivyo tu. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there is a river 
flowing. Nimeweka eh? So deep and wide there is a river flowing. Sijui sana kuimba lakini ndajitahidi. Tunaimba hivi deep and wide deep and wide there is a river flowing deep and wide. Meleka ni uje tena. Deep and wide deep and wide there is a river flowing deep and wide. Tena deep and wide deep and wide there is a river flowing deep and wide. Nimefurahi mmefanya nyie wote vitendo. Sasa tutakuwa nafanya hivi bado. Tutakuwa nafanya hivi tunaenda chini kabisa. Deep and wide deep and wide there is a river flowing deep and wide. Tuende tena deep and mikono yote Deep and wide, there is a river flowing deep and wide. Sasa sasa tujipige kofi moja. Sasa bado Dr. Tell, sasa. Sasa hivi tunaenda kuitoa hatuitamki deep. Tafanya kitendo tu. Yaani kitendo tu ndo kitafanyika ila ile neno deep halisisikiki kabisa. Kwa mfano. And wide and wide there is a river flowing and why imeleka jamani mtu asikosea au sio twende kazi and why and why there is a river flowing mungu wangu mama amekosea hapa kaa pembeni toka okay sasa hizi tunaenda kutoa deep wide tunatoa tena deep wide Mengine yote nafanya nini? Yanabaki. Tunatoa deep. Sijasema deep and wide. Tunatoa deep wide. Nimesema yote yanabaki au sio? Twende kazi moja mbili tatu. And Twende tena turudie. Okay ya mwisho tunaenda kutoa uh, tunaenda kutoa uh, deep wide there is a river flowing au sio tunaenda kutoa deep wide there is a river flowing tunatoa tumeloana twende wote and <laughs> okay shako sasa asante sana turudia Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very um, good energizer. <laughs> Secretariat, are things ready? Yes. Downstairs? So uh, I take this opportunity to allow you and welcome you for lunch. Aha sasa kwa muda huu dakika chache tu mbili tatu hivi tupate ile tutuje form of nafikiri wanapanga panga vitu hapo mezani wakati huu sisi tujaze hizo evaluation forms then twende tukapate lunch